Okay, it was Talking Heads, Life During Wartime. Very appropriate for the climate we live in today. This is Bo from the Bo and Rockle Show. Tammy Peppermint is joining me. And this is the public law. And we are brought to you by you. So, uh, Patty, who is our show host, uh, radio host, manager, uh, I guess. What's a good word for her, Tammy? Station uh, owner. The station owner, of course. So she uh, foots the bill. So I think there's information over there if you are inclined to support station then we're more appreciative yeah just click on the paypal button it'll go right to patty and it'll keep us on the air all right so with that being said this is kind of a new show title that we're gonna call the public law because as we switch over into the new Court of Assizes, new session of Assizes. Uh, we went up against the federal state last year and essentially kicked their asses because <laughs> they're such blatant criminals and psychopaths and we just allow them to do what they do and we evidenced it. Things are starting to change slowly. If uh, you're wondering, sometimes scratching your head about some of the headlines you're reading, why things are going down this way, this show will help you to comprehend that. Now, of course, we do have a serious, serious problem with the law enforcement out there globally. I'm not just talking about the United States. States or the landmass commonly known as United States of America, but uh, since the Atlantic Charter, of course, and this is a foundational principle of what we talk about here, we've been under global governance since 1941, Atlantic Charter between Churchill and FDR, where Congress was given world dominion, and once you realize that, you can see how much some of the stories out there, like what's going on in Ukraine and Crimea, uh, between Russia and China and everything else, you can see what a farce that is, how much propaganda that is, because they're all Congress, they're all under Congress, and so this is the situation we find ourselves in. We're not going into a new world order. We've already been under global governance since 1941. Okay? And then, for all of the listeners out there, if you want to follow that through, go read the Yalta Conference, the um, treaties with Crimea, Russia, uh, all of these I other... I think Crimea ones. has been the way I've been hearing it pronounced in right. the news stories. Crimea. Yeah, Crimea River. Yeah. I don't do the names anyway. But um, all of these things are written in their own hands. They're, they're evidence of their criminal activities. And um, they've been discharging bankruptcy in the wrong manner. And, and um, now, of course, we're watching the clearinghouses, which is each Secretary of State being held accountable for their works and actions um, on the federal level as well as on the national level. And... Um, as we're watching this, it's just, it's just so profound to watch them turn on each other and say, well, you know, it, it's not us, the clearinghouse, it's our contractors. We're the, the contractors under a clearinghouse is a conservator under a bankrupt state. And, um, it, and a conservator is usually on the corporate council. Right. Or is an attorney, right? right. Well, Absolutely. Can, and fill in any right. holes there that people don't understand about uh, these conservators. Okay, so in our case, for example, you go back to the first initial gameplay with Andrew Seward. Andrew Seward is corporate counsel, he's a conservator. Under that conservator is the board of commission who came in and said, oh, we're, we're defending this. Well, they're in a commission state under the Association of Corporate Counsel. 
So they were all directed by Andrew Seward, and then he came in and evidences. He says, yeah, it's me, it's me, it's the federal state. And so that was the first time that the national state rolled on the federal state. Well, then, you know, we watched it through um, Shiplo, and then we watched the federal state, you know, trump up and protect the national state and throw themselves under the bus. And um, ultimately, throughout the woven process, you know, here they are, they're pointing fingers at each other. And No, it's not me. Well, if you know your human trafficking and you know what a surety is and you buy surety bonds, it's a guarantee that you already have knowledge that you're human trafficking, of course. And um, the, the next level of that is that you are an attorney. You know, you, you were tricking and deceiving human beings through the use of language with knowledge that you were nothing but a court jester putting on an entertaining show you and the rest of the court actors and so there's not um, an excuse for that uh, there's no excuse for taking an oath to another Lord God uh, outside of humanity and that doesn't fly with me or the uh, public law because if you're not for humanity of course you're against it and that does evidence the title of Satan meaning adversary so here we are you wanted to uh, share a bunch of stuff and get everybody updated on on things that are occurring so I don't want to go on one of my spills yet well no no uh, since this is pretty much the opening show for the public law uh, whatever we need to do to bring people up to speed since the public law says do no harm all the uh, laws ever written that uh, have to do with humanity or harm against humanity basically is what the public law is about but we don't even need all that because that's all under their private acts and acts of commerce you know statute codes regulations uh, simply says to do no harm you know and if you are somebody that harms somebody then you can be held liable per the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity which says if you do harm somebody you have no immunity so right there as you can see from our perspective and moving the world back to the public law and that is a, a land without the law merchant the attorney is coming in and codifying and renting out your bodies for all these commercial crimes as you can see, w once we level the playing field, it, it, it applies across the, the board. doesn't matter if your name is Brown, Barack Obama, Netanyahu, yada, 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 across the globe, 7 billion people. It all applies equally the same to everybody. So instead of these... Let's call them what they are, attorneys that are leaders getting away with everything under the sun, with all the corporations getting away with everything under the sun, uh, you know. Well, I break that down because it's hard for the listeners sometimes to realize what a corporation is. It's a building. It's a representation of the attorney's leading the corporation. There's no such thing as a corporation. That is a fiction. What you see is a representation of a fiction and it's the attorneys behind that corporation, the Board of Governors. Yeah, and I guess a good place to start is just in the history and the, you know, I don't know, where, where can you direct these people to start, I, I guess. We start out with constitutional theory. The, the way to break a human is to hurt it. And in hurting it, somebody perpetrates a war against you, and all of a sudden you find yourself in a really, really yucky garden. And as you're going through this war, 
and something's attacking you that has never ever entered your consciousness before you don't know what to do about it because you're from a, a being that's not violent and at that point in time somebody rushes in really quickly and says da -da -da, we're here to help I'm from the UN or da -da -da, here I am I'll save you I'll be the original 13 colonies now these folks these entities they like perpetrating war and and you can read how they establish a constitution or constitutional theory by one of their handbooks. It's called the Post-Conflict Constitutional Theory Drafters Handbook. And it teaches directors and administrators how to implicate constitutional theory after putting somebody through war. And at that point that is first generation warfare okay you're sitting there you're experiencing it you are that generation now as the area is still occupied by the uh, perpetrator of war against you and as the society gets used to that perpetrator offering it benefits and rights your constitutional theory you go through second and third generation warfare and at this point in time you are at low intensity conflict which is fourth generation warfare so you have the military zones are the hospitals CPS units social services uh, that type of thing and it looks really 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 pretty those things were actually set up under an ugly, ugly, ugly pogrom uh, designed by folks such as Henry Kissinger. In 1974, Henry Kissinger came in and the population had grew to the extent that they were no longer able to be controlled easily. So Henry Kissinger came in and he said, well, I'll Depopulation now should be the highest priority of all foreign policy. All of our communication, all of our efforts at social engineering should be pointing towards the goal of depopulation. And so they established the Office of Population Affairs, which is the Department of Social and Health Services, or DHHS, Social and Human Health Services, something like that. That thing offers you perks and benefits in exchange for dying, in exchange for buying time, in exchange for producing in a corporation and enjoying your captivity under fourth generation warfare. That is the design of HUD housing, that's the design of Section 8 grants, that's the design of welfare benefits and food stamps and Social Security and veterans benefits. The, those designs are the action of hearts and minds to allow you to feel comfortable even though you are in a war zone. You're being attacked at all times, the IRS is after you, CPS is after you, adult protection, social services county code violations, city code violations, uh, school truancies, sexual abuse, abuse, child abuse, all of these things, prostitution, drug use, all of these pressures are put against you so that you, you rush off to the same perpetrator of these crimes. You rush right out, oh my gosh, please help me. I need an attorney to represent me because I'm being harmed here. And so they offer you new avenues, low income um, legal aid, they've got free legal aid, and, and these attorneys are using you and, and, and keeping you busy so that you're not seeing exactly what they're doing all around. You don't see what your neighbor's going through, which is the same thing you're going through because you've been made secular. Oh, that one's a Protestant and I'm a... Jew or that one's a Muslim and I'm a Christian whatever that he likes a different team than I like and he patronizes something else 
So you're pitting polarized against each other so that you can play this game. You are producing because of hatred. You are producing because of jealousy. And you are producing because of envy. And that is how Jesus finds him or herself on the cross and how Jesus is left there because you don't like each other. You don't know each other. You're not, you're not with each other. And so all along, you can be tricked and deceived to a certain point. But when it gets to the point of watching television and, and living in your own life while, while your neighbor has been dead three years, four years, one year, you don't know, you know, nope, never heard from him. He was quiet. She was quiet. Didn't talk much. In you know, all of these things, you're not realizing that you are an animal, you're a biology, and somebody was just picked off and you didn't notice it. If that happened to any other biology on this planet, it would become extinct. Attorneys found a new way of hunting and being a predator through the use of all of these resources and media presentations through the use of all of their departments and all of their little services. Under the public law those things don't exist. There is nobody cashing in on your existence. There is nobody cashing in on your demise. There is nobody cashing in on your estate. There is nobody cashing in from criminal acts perpetrated against you. There's no benefit in your to harm you under the public law. Whereby the effect of that is you're no longer harmed. And it it boggles my mind that so many can be still on the fence. Because, you know, we want our benefits, we want our social security and that what about my retirement? And what if what if I lose everything if I go that way? You know, and they were, they were asking Jesus the same thing. He says, pick up your own cross and follow me. Now, don't worry about all this stuff. Don't you realize that you guys are being slaughtered? You're inside of a war zone and you're being hunted? Right, and you've also been conditioned over time and generations to believe that you can harm a stop sign and such. Right, and, and these things you're, you're uh, valuing property over each other. A stop sign's more important than a child. A uh, McDonald's, a closed down McDonald's building in Florida was more important than a child. After a child was tased to death by police for vandalizing that building, the community didn't do anything. They didn't overturn any vandalism laws. They didn't say, what the hell are you doing? They didn't do anything. They accepted it as something that's normalized. But a child was killed. A child was killed. Yeah. And for those that listen to Alan Watt, maybe you'll appreciate how Congress, basically, or the system, or the experts, we want to call it the power that be, conditions you and, and gives you the choices and the talking points that it wants you to have. Okay? Sort of like when they... They wanted to condition people against smoking. You know, you can't smoke anywhere anymore, it seems. And, you know, I did studies and they would, they, you know, they would have, uh, you know, kids would observe somebody smoking across the room and, and, and they'd immediately start coughing in a uh, Pavlov, Pavlovian response. 
You know, smoke wasn't even anywhere near them. It's, things like that on on every level. Uh, politics. Uh, goodness. It, it's just they present you both sides of the argument and the they point you towards the solution they want you to come up with. Right. And, and you know, going just on that point alone, in the 1960s, the FDA approved nicorette gum, knowing the addiction to nicotine was there, knowing that there was, that nicotine was an addictive substance, and then they spanked themselves later, after they themselves found that nicotine was addictive and that they were lying to themselves. And they increased your taxes, and they increased the cost of your cigarettes to pay themselves back for lying to themselves. You got to pay their fine. Isn't that something tricky and so ingenious? Because, you know, they're there to protect you. J.P. Morgan, oh, never mind, Philip Morris. They're all the same. They're all the same attorneys. It's all the same banking. Microsoft and this antitrust, it's a monopoly. <laughs> so Microsoft comes in and it finds itself and catches in. And then it jacks up the price on the computers and on the software that Microsoft puts out. And finds you for its antitrust lawsuit violations. And get this. Priests that are sleeping with your babies and, and uh, preying on your babies. They get fined through the courts. They also get federal funding which comes from your tax dollars. So you're paying them to rape your kids the first time. You're tithing to their churches and so you're paying them to rape your kids the second time. And when they get fined and when they get slapped on the hand for raping your children, you pay for that, too. In this corporal welfare schematic, there's nothing that the human being is finding benefit in or that's healthy for humanity in any way. It's corporal welfare. Under the public law is general welfare. Right. And these things that are being perpetuated by the private acts and acts commerce system that you've all laid down to, law means basically lay down and you've laid down to their legal codes and statutes. They've got your hook, line, and sinker. You're in there voting. You're buying their licenses. You're... You're buying their concepts, their laws, this constitutional nonsense I hear over and over again. You know, we want our First Amendment, we want our Fourth Amendment, whatever, Second Amendment. Uh, now, nobody stops to ever think that how they, they sold these rights back to you, but... They had to take them from you in the first place. Whatever gave them the authority to take them from you? Well, they gave it to themselves. Just kind of like they agreed <coughs> among themselves that they were going to be your Congress. Which means with transgression. So they say, okay, we're going to be your transgressors. Style of this confederacy, which is a criminal enterprise or conspiracy shall be known as the United States of America. That's right in the Articles of Confederation, Article 1. Then skip down to Article 12. It says they're going to pledge you as the surety on what backs their debt. Right, and they're pledging. Now, this is the thing that they can guarantee. When they pledge your productive value, they're pledging the amount of concepts you're holding. So they can say, I can guarantee that that father over there is going to defend the title of dad. And the way to 
invoke a court case, of course, is to call him a bad dad, and then he'll run into court and he'll evidence it. You know, that he's he's good. He'll get all these experts, and for years we'll redistribute his assets in the amount of one hundred fifty thousand dollars or so, using the female against him. She's an informant. She's rattling off everything that they own, and he's trying to protect that. Now, for those of you who don't get it, every time you take up a title, any title, you're purchasing from the law merchant. Every time you hold a title and you defend that title, you're purchasing from the law merchant. This is your productive value. Now you've got designer diseases you can have. If you want to, quote, rest for a little while. These things are sick. You can, you can take any number of prescriptions writing you before you are to guarantee your productive value under that system. Every time you take up any title and part yourself out from the entire whole garment, well, you're parted. You're, you're no longer of humanity. You're no longer of the garment. Now you're something else. You, you've been separated, and now you are on the edge of the herd because you're special. If you call yourself a female, you're, you're covered under feminism, honey. You're special. That moves you to the edge of the herd. And at that point in time, you can be picked off by the predator because you're on the edge of the herd. You've separated yourself from the herd. There's no protection in that. If you run into court and you ask it to prey on you, you're separated from the herd. You're coming in under feminism or masculism, Zionism, Islamism, Catholicism, Judaism, environmentalism, corporatism, individualism. I want my individual rights guaranteed to me by the Constitution. You're separated that instant from the herd. And the name is called a distraint. That's a distraint against you. You've just caused an accident. You've just caused this smashing experience by taking up that title. You've just been injured or brought into law. Simply by, simply by claiming that name, that title, and defending it. And ensuring the corporation never goes hungry, never goes homeless, never lives without, never survives on t ramen noodles for months at a time or peanut butter. That corporation will never go through that. All it has to make you do is defend the title. So pick one. Pick one. Just say what kind of stock you want to be. And we'll design your future for you. Because as you purchase those titles, you're purchasing all the rights and benefits that come along with that. And you have a predetermined outcome. The outcome is never, ever, ever good for humanity when you're taking up a title. You're casting lots and you're causing a crucifixion to occur. You're hung on that cross. Now you've got all these burdens of defending that title. Right. So defending title. Uh, these are the things that attorneys do. These are the things that you do to get you on the hook and getting into those courts of bow, pleading, complaining counter complaining defending and by going in there you're basically agreeing to be the negotiable instrument to offset their congressional bankruptcy under the judge's oath 28 USC 453 a judge is nothing but an attorney in a black dress as we evidenced in my case and the attorney's oath is found under Title 12, the banking section of the United States Code, under subsection 73, where he says that 
he's not going to be hypothecated. Oh, no, no, no. He promising you that. So, essentially, they've got an oath to that bar, which is their government. Okay. They're not United States citizens, these attorneys. Oh, they say they're not hypothecated. They're not pledged or charged at all. Right. And as we uncovered recently, according to the 1929 Geneva Convention, Article 66, they're essentially escaping, and therefore they're the ones that need to be imprisoned. Right. That's the only time you can have anybody in prison under the rules of war is for attempted escape or escape. And the attorneys all escaped with the Emergency Banking Act of Act of 1933, when they came in as their own trustees, and they said, darn the luck, we're a bankrupt entity, so we'll go ahead and collect from ourselves. We'll go ahead and be the trustees over this bankruptcy, wink, wink. And, of course, now you see the downfall of these things. You know, the clearinghouse is pointing the fingers at its contractors, and the contractor conservators are pointing the fingers up at the clearinghouse, and they're pointing the fingers over at law enforcement, like the one in Illinois. He says, no, no, I'm not, I'm not discharging congressional bankruptcy. You look over there at the, the uh, law enforcement. This is not me. Everybody's pointing fingers all around, and nobody's taking accountability. Although they were acting with knowledge, and that and that's another indication of being without honors. You're not even taking care of your bankruptcy. You know, there's no liberty. You can't have liberty. You can't grant liberty. You can't hold liberty unless you are in honor. And that's uh, what they're finding out right now. Because, you know, here's another attorney charged with child sexual abuse and... Some more corporations find a million dollars here and sixteen billion dollars there and all of these things and the attorneys are now getting squeezed. You'll see that in very simple, short, concise, easy to understand language in the letter to John Kerry as the rest of the pertinent parts of this court case over at chooseyourside.org or tammypeppermint.org go into the document section and read the case folks I can't stress enough how important it is to understand this as I essentially am the only one that I know of in the legal history that I've studied that's come in and sued the federal state indicted the federal state indicted Congress as a sovereign state, okay, we're not talking about sovereign sovereign citizens here or sovereign, uh, just you know, the word sovereign, uh, man, no, yeah, sovereign man, free man on the land. Man is a legal creation. I keep trying to tell people that. I mean, how can you claim to be a free man? Right. When you're taking up that title of man, which is under their lexicon, which you find in the uh, bag, the money money bag under the uh, exchequer. Yeah, read the dialogue of the exchequer. There's a link, I believe, there on Choose Your Sides, uh, chooseyourside.org, and we'll try to fill in the holes here as we cover some of this news. But we should get on and start talking about what's going on in the news with uh, these. New sureties, because out of this case, the main thing you need to wrap your mind around is that since we've been held as chattel uh, prisoners of war since 1929, Geneva Convention, where the citizens were thrown into the chute, essentially, into Northern Holdings and Trust, as it was named at the time, now under the guise of Northern Hold Northern Holding Corporation, uh, headquarters located in Chicago, Illinois. You know we've swapped us for the surety for the attorney, fiction, corporation, judges, etc. 
So that's the thing they have to start using to discharge congressional bankruptcy. That's what you got to start wrapping your mind around. That's why you're starting to see ju judges uh, on the hook, attorneys on the hook, cops being held accountable because they've evidenced their form of government as per the Atlantic Charter to be that thing known as the Federal State Congress, United States Inc., takes up so many different names and titles but it's all the same thing like this all this business with the CIA that fiasco CIA was created under Congress the 1947 National Security Act now we got Feinstein saying oh look what the CIA is doing to me that's and my favorite she's she's just said it's chair. ridiculous it's about as ridiculous as uh, what's going on in Ukraine but people just they don't know. I think it's two separate things. Right. And, and originally, you know, this people see her as, you know, maybe a liar. Well, then she, she's a liar with her freaking head on fire at this point in time, you know. And it's like, holy cow. Diane Feinstein's done some pretty, pretty horrifying things. And uh, when she comes in as a chair of the Senate uh, Intelligence Committee, She's the director of the CIA, and uh, although they have Brennan, it says he's the director, but the CIA is cre created by the Senate and House of Representatives. It's their production company, and um, when she's up there dancing around and everything else, you see this presentation. Now go over and look at her sitting on the Senate Judiciary Committee because it's in the bag. However, they use you to uh, discharge congressional bankruptcy is through the courts. Those are banks. Hospitals are banks. This is all stemming through, such as the 1864 Geneva Convention, 1929 Geneva Convention, 1789 Judiciary Act. You need to look at all of these things and realize that it's all banking. And when you have Feinstein up there, this monster, this behemoth, Frankenstein. She's, yeah, she's sitting there with John Cornyn. She's sitting there with Barbara Boxer, another nice little feminist. And they're presenting to the she full on such as C-SPAN and all of these different uh, propaganda promotions that, you know, I'm all for you. Well, she's on the back end of things directing the promotion itself, directing the production itself. And so you've got this ringer in the shoot telling you, oh, we're protecting you. And then, you know, here we evidence the entire system, the entire thing, start to finish, bottom to top, side to side, does nothing but prey on human beings. There, there was not one time when it did anything that was beneficial to humanity. Not one time in all of our, our years, in all of our walk. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, we went in and evidenced all of it. To do that, we had to just basically let them do what they do. And right. that's essentially screw you over. Right, from show it your belly. Show it you got a soft spot. And that, that's my favorite because, you know, the minute, even now, you know, I can um, maintain that I'm, you know, tired or I'm... Uh, ill in some way and somebody will hear that over the airwaves and all of a sudden I'm being attacked because they love to kick us when we're down and so the majority of our walk you know is just kind of um, never lying but giving the illusion that we're so tired we can't go on anymore and that's that's a controlled movement the next movement they make is absolutely controlled you know hey look all I got to do is show my soft underbelly and and uh away they go poking at it or whatever they're going to do and that it's always controlled by us because we know that they're going to do stuff when our when they believe we're on their when up we're on our knees and and each time you know whatever floats your boat it's your quote country that you're pulling down from the top inward so okay so there's basically a feel for what we've been able to do in this 
particular court case coming in as a sovereign state holding them accountable and essentially uh, following the rules of the exchequer and that's the rules that basically they got to play by too that's if you're in there as a citizen pleading then you're essentially uh, patronizing it and they'll administer you accordingly you can't hold them accountable the best you can hope for is some sort of uh, small penance remedy type thing and, and it really remedy is not what we're after here we was after the cure okay this is about the cure and it's about you know that cure being the facilitation of the return to the public law and when I say return to the public law this means going all the way back to the Garden of Eden where snake came in the garden picture that snake as the, the serpent uh, attorney the attorney was offering Eve his better way yeah his, Hi, his greener pastures people. legal process uh, benefits Okay, to get a benefit, again, you have to, <laughs> you have to uh, basically concede that they had the right to take the estate from you in the first place, essentially. Right. Honey, you don't have to listen to him. You, you want nice things, right? Well, we got those over here. I can give you free education, free housing, free daycare. And all you have to do is leave Adam. All you have to do is leave Adam. And you know what I can do? I can give you the greatest of titles. Good mother, I can give you full custody if you come over to my side. I can give you a really cushy job. Legal assistant to the attorney general. I mean, crap. I can offer you whatever. So in truth, we probably never did have the public law after the uh, stake in the garden but at any rate it, it preempts the law merchant and it gets back to common sense would allow us to evolve as we are meant to without being held back by these attorneys now so why don't we go ahead and get into some news I got I got a fresh one right here I just pulled up Tammy on the uh, search since I just found this this is hot today ties right in with the snake in the garden Scranton Ooh. police arrest a priest Thursday Ooh, fresh meat for plying a 13 year old girl with alcohol and touching her feet and dies inappropriately after a midnight Christmas mass in 1998 Ugh. you're going back to yeah officer charged the uh, Reverend Philip Altavilla 48, who was a pastor at St. Patrick's Parish in Scranton at the time of the alleged crime with indecent assault, criminal attempt to indecent assault and corruption of minors. The victim, who was a member of the St. Patrick's Parish, told police that the Reverend Altavilla gave her alcohol in the rec rectory after the midnight service, then offered to drive her home at about 3 a.m. Once in the car, he pulled her legs on his lap and began touching her feet, moving his hands oh. up her legs until the victim attempted to escape, according to the criminal complaint. The priest then apologized and drove the girl home. Why was she there until 3 o'clock in the morning? Where were her parents? Did they know about these things? Yeah, and they have these get-togethers in these religious communities. You know, they have sleepovers and stuff. So yeah, but that's sick. This is. is sick. They know that priests are predators. So this one comes from the citizensvoice.com. I just just dug it up. I just thought it was um, something to get the ball kicking here. I know there's a lot of news, a lot of, a lot of cops. Well, any parents know now that priests are predators. There's there's no question who's the predator. And any parent that that, that still allows their children to be in those situations will be also held accountable. 
But over in Vietnam, they're taking this very seriously. Things may be a little slower going here because they have so many more attorneys. I don't know. There's two million attorneys in this landmass known as continental United States of America. I don't know the numbers for Canada or Mexico, but I imagine there's. I mean, they're everywhere. I mean, every country. Like I said, it's a uh, same similar global governance since 1941. But in Vietnam, uh. Over at Live Leak, the headline reads, Vietnam is sentencing corrupt bankers to death by firing squad. Good. Now, the thing that we're going to get into here a little bit, though, and that you need to realize, as the mainstream and the alternative media mantra always talks about these quote-unquote bankers. And if we look back... Uh, We'll show you some documentation here from Congressional Record where you can see that the bankers are law firms. Absolutely. Law firms are run by attorneys. Absolutely. So bankers are attorneys. Courts are and, banks. And what we talked about earlier, yeah, courts are banks and judges are the real bankers. Okay, but we're not talking about judges here. We're talking about probably attorneys. Right. Vietnam is sentencing corrupt bankers to death. Substitute the word attorneys if you'd like. By firing squad. Bangkok. Uh, for the most part, American bankers whose rash pursuit of profit brought on the 2008 global financial collapse didn't get indicted. They got bonuses. Odds are that scandal would have played out differently in Vietnam, another nation struggling with misbehaving bankers. The authoritarian Southeast Asia state doesn't just send unscrupulous financiers to jail. Sometimes it sends them to death row. Good. Amid a sweeping cleanup of its financial sector, Vietnam has sentenced three bankers to death in the past six months. One duo, now on death row, embezzled roughly $25 million from the state-owned Vietnam Agribank. Oh, no, because they, they're executing their own employees. We don't want that to occur. We want to execute the, the actual bank. That says they were embezzling from the state, so they're being executed for commercial crime. No. No, so well, if they're being executed for commercial crime, they're, they're chosen form of government, though, right? Absolutely, but they didn't embezzle from a human being. They embezzled from a corporation, the state. But it doesn't matter. That's their chosen form of government. That's their codes and statutes that apply to them as assuming that title of the fiction, banker, attorney, whatever. Yeah, we can't save them because they're not... Well, we're not going to save them. Well, well, they can petition us. If, if they want us to, to help, if there's no evidence that they've harmed a human being, right. they can petition the United States court, and, and we can intercede if there's evidence that they haven't harmed. You know, if there's evidence that you've harmed, there's no, uh, there's no such thing as any immunity or sovereignty, as it's stated. But, but uh, just in case, because that, that one sounds so sad. I mean, they're just embezzling from the embezzlers themselves, so they're undercutting the federal state again. Okay, there's other stories here then too. Their co-conspirators in that case caught decade plus prison sentences too. By the way, in March, a 57 year old former regional boss from Vietnam Development Bank, another government run bank, right, was, sent, a, was sentenced to death over a 93 million dollar swindling job. Um, everybody on federal employee, that's the development uh, division of the United States. So that is the you know, that's like the Office of Rural Development. They're executing their employees in the Office of Rural Development there. Okay, the Department of Natural Resources, things like that. So everybody on federal employee, if you're innocent, get away from them immediately. They're, they're executing you. This is, this is terrible. I know that there's cannibalism and stuff, but it's still like, what if there's some innocence in there? And they need to get out of there really quickly. According to Vietnam's Tool Tree news outlet, several of the colluders were sentenced to life, imprisonment, 
after they confessed to securing bogus loans with the diamond ring and the BMW coupe. That's what they do. And last week, in an unrelated case, charges against senior employees from the same bank alleged $47 million in losses from dubious loans. So it goes on to say, none of this would impress Bernie Madoff, mastermind of America's largest ever financial fraud scheme. Yeah. Now, I'll let you go on. I know where you're going to go with that. You get, let me finish this paragraph. The, the, com, the combined amount from all three Vietnamese cases adds up to less than 1% of his purported $18 billion haul. But these death sentences, nevertheless, are high-profile scandals in Vietnam. That's the point. Yeah, it's just cannibalism. I I, I know, I know. Go ahead and um, yeah, the, the talk stop. about Bernie Madoff for a minute because yeah. he was a fall guy for the federal state. Right, and the federal state then came and cashed in again, and then cashed in again. They were selling those stocks for pennies on the dollar and just fingering Madoff, but the stocks were still there. How do you lose those stocks? Right, it's all through a a, a computer system. You can't lose those stocks. Okay, and and so. All of these things were facilitated by the federal government. When you go all the way back to the inceptions, the greatest Ponzi scheme ever starts out in the first paragraph and it says, the style of this confederacy shall be known as the, quote, United States of America, end quote. That is an article of incorporation of a corporation. That formulated a corporation that pledged and charged human beings to discharge its debt. But so Madoff, though, uh, the federal state came in and seized all these stocks, right? Right. And said they were lost first. But but and now they're they're still charging him taxes though right. while he's in prison. The victim on these. Bunnies, uh stocks that they, they confiscated. So, the, I mean, what Madoff did is 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 way no. huger than these bankers here in Vietnam. Right. But what the federal state has been doing is way bigger than Bernie Madoff. Right. And the federal state is still victimizing the victims of the Bernie Madoff scam. They're still. They were still at that time when those monies were stolen. The monies are gone, right? But they show up on a ledger as income. So they were charging income taxes on that stolen money that was gone to the victims of the stolen money. So the federal government is raising you once, twice, three times a lady, and you're fornicating with it. You're just laying there and taking all this stuff. And it just keeps right on going because you're patronizing it and calling it daddy. Until now, and, and, but you well, have you still have free will. If you want right. to call that thing your government, hey, when you say our government, hey, leave me out of it. I'm that's not my government. So right. I want to make that very clear here. Part of the process was divesting all title. Uh, essentially, resulted in removing all the corporate stock from the House of Representatives and moving it back over into my own house. And choosing to be the executor over my own estate instead of choosing for them to be the right. executor over my estate. Right. And you and it only made more sense to me. Right. And you walk as to the public law. And that's, that's a, one of the saddest things for me is that everybody still has free will. Okay. You're either going to be a citizen of the United States Incorporated or a citizen of the United States a being, which is a bit being. You're going to be your house that you patronize, or you're going to patronize another house. And when you choose that with knowledge, now in their media, in the mainstream media, they've come out now and they've said, well, we're criminal here. We're the FBI. We've been the ones that are, you know, facilitating racial tension with the Muslims. We're the FBI or the CIA. We're, we're the underwear bomber. They've told you all of these things. They've told you, look, we don't protect you. Our cops kill you. Our attorneys rape your children. Our priests rape your children. Our psychiatrists rape your children. 
and we trick you out. We're discharging congressional bankruptcy using you, the citizen, as a negotiable instrument. Now, they have been telling you that in their media. So, you are given a choice of what form of government you want to choose. Right. And right now is your decision. There's no other time because you are either going to be taken by the United States Incorporated or you're going to be standing in your own house patronizing your own house. And as your clerk, I'll do whatever it takes, whatever you, your house, feels necessary to do and hold them accountable like we have been. But I can't do that if you're a citizen of the United States Incorporated. I can't touch you. It's hands off. They have you. You are their property. So, in Vietnam, you know, they can ex execute its citizens for a range of corporate crimes that says they've got a different constitution. They're still under the Confederation, though. Absolutely. Came in under the 1941 Atlantic right. Charter. It's just they have a different way of doing business there. Right, just like okay. North Korea. But they still have a constitution. Right. And if that's your chosen form of government, and you're not given much of a choice here, too, uh, you know, an authoritarian type of government, unfortunately, but the presumption has got to start changing, and... I don't know, we'll work that out as we go, but basically uh, we're focusing on the Western world to start, although, it again, it is all basically under the same global governance. And and that's tied in, through, it's tied in through these, like the Atlantic Charter is a, an agreement between banks. The uh, charter formulates a bank. Well, okay, yeah, sets up the banking schematic there. Right, that's what a charter does. And then the treaties are agreements between two banks, and then they have the um, constitutions and other articles or amendments are the insurance policies. Charters okay. can also be insurance policies, formulating a bank. And each article is just another policy or an agreement of some kind. Okay, so... Yeah, so... I don't know how much more to uh, pound that out, but hopefully you can... If you're new to our material, you can dive into some of the archives and... The way to do that is leaving the farm with Tammy Pepperman and the Bowen Rock will show from the archives at freedomslips.com or on their YouTube channel, Bono's Entertainment's got a link, quick link to those channels and uh, YouTube archives and that sort of thing. Uh, and read the material read the case read uh, all the cases there we have uh, essentially a important recent developments between uh, United States court and, and what's uh, going on in Illinois with Rockle's situation who is still behind bars now since January 31st with no warrant no order well, nothing except for corporate counsel attorneys. Well, they were trying not to pay us, so they started going after the uh, conservatives, and that's what we watched this week, is they're trying to say, um, excuse me, but this is all going to be on you. So, Scott Summers, here comes the federal government. And, you know, it's just sad. When I spoke to him, I said, fine, you know, whatever, you'll, you'll be contacted by the insurer and that's the contact it says no I want my money back it's not uh, John Kerry it's you you know that's what they're saying in these uh, newest reports and and um, it's quite profound to see
It really is because they're just rolling over on each other left and right. And the longer, you know, this plays out, the more crap that befalls them. But that's what they're choosing. Right. Trying to uh, strong arm us into, you know, taking a cut as to the fee schedule or strong arm us and have us forgive them. And, and we don't negotiate with pirates. We're not able to. I can't limit their liability because it already occurred. It continues to occur. Right, in this perpetual union. Uh, I think that's what people don't get about the uh, the longevity of this. I wrote a little piece up there for the introduction at uh, Choose Your Side. And in that I talk about how that it's always been Congress uh, back in the days of Rome. I mean, and this is Rome today. All roads lead to Rome. This is still the Roman Empire. But uh, back then, they called it Senate. But today, we call it Congress. Because it's a House of Representatives. You know, you need a House. You can't be like, you know, Aristotle or... Plato or Socrates or anything, you, you got to have a representative, right? You, you just can't handle this all by yourself and, and be the authority. You have to have somebody to represent you. And, and this is just terrible because the presentation went from, you know, the Senate to the Senate and the House of Representatives. And, and of course, you know, back then Socrates and, and Plato and all of those were dancing around trying to formulate those those republics, and of course we have the um, Athenian Constitution and all these things, but you know, come on, no, no more buying these gimmicks. This is ridiculous. It just makes you sick. So these people that like to bean count human beings, basically, we should call them human bean counters instead of bean counters, but attorneys are bean counters. They don't produce anything except for misery and uh, they are uh, essentially of a psychopathic mindset now here we'll go back to some of your stories today if you want to talk about them I'll just read the headlines high-flying lawyer claims successful she's psychopath oh yeah that was when we were sharing back in in um, October when we were talking about that, and, um, you know, and she's a psychopath, and she's, she's saying, you know, I wouldn't have made this much money if I wasn't a psychopath, and, and she, she kind of came out on behalf of all the attorneys and said, look, we're nothing but psychopaths. And that was on the Daily Mail. This comes after we facilitated this sort of action from the media, because we told them, we said, hey, all right, you you lost, okay? So here's what you got to do. You got two years to start de de deprogramming these people. Right. And, and that goes to the next um, news we were sharing about the uh, Boston Marathon's brother, the bomber, his brother was attempted on by the FBI. They were trying to recruit him. You know, oh, yeah. But but they they disclose all of these things. Look look, it's just a presentation. Just before that, we we approached the brother. He didn't want to work for us, and uh, you know, it's so give us the opportunity to to uh, you know off a couple other people, and that's exactly what happened at Fort Hood just now. They they recruited an actor to play in a play act, and uh, you know ended up uh, loading his weapons with not blanks and so this actor he's playing the play act he shoots up a whole bunch of people thinking he's just an actor and all of a sudden he, he they turn on him and start shooting him can you imagine his surprise because he just answered an ad and said yeah sure they did the same thing four and a half years ago shown how this works through the CIA okay those ads put on Craigslist to hire these actors are put out there uh, at the local level by the CIA. But then, now the CIA can can 
turn around and point your finger at the national or the uh, you local know, municipality. Local. Yeah, and the, and the psychiatrist jump in there and he says, oh, he was diagnosed, he was diagnosed. And everybody's just playing all these games and it's so sick. Yeah, kind of like the games are playing with this plane. Right. They're looking in some place that uh, right now the, the plane didn't even have the fuel to get there. Right. And they're, they're showing pictures of the plane like before it took off and, and reminiscing on this plane that never existed, the flight that never existed. And it's like they're trying to integrate into the sheeple mind the consensus reality required for them to remember this. Well, I'm not convinced that the you know, plane didn't exist altogether. Uh, however, it would be easier for them to manufacture that evidence than... It was for them, apparently, to cover up all the mistakes on 9-11 in 2001. Right. And it's it's constant. I mean, this is what they do. It, it's so, you know, I don't know how else to say it unless I put, like, firecrackers in my butt and, and started sparkling. You know, maybe we get more... Uh, people to hear and see what's going on you know they have just these beautiful presentations CNN and all these shiny things and and all these things and here we only have the truth and the truth isn't very entertaining to a lot of folks you know it, it's more entertaining to to t talk about disappearing planes and and Barack Obama's real name and Barack Obama's birth certificate. Psychopathic women yeah. getting arrested for going belligerent because uh, their boyfriend won't give them sex. Right. Right. That's entertaining. Boogers. Big boogers. That, that, uh, there's, Google that one and, and go to YouTube. Search out booger. B O O G R. And there's hundreds of thousands of hits on booger videos. It's like, what the heck? We have devolved this far. Social engineering is called. Now, you you you, you talked about earlier on. Um, I don't know if it was on this show or not. It might have been yesterday's show of Leaving the Farm, which is a must listen for anybody that missed missed that. There'll be a uh, YouTube up on it probably this evening or by tomorrow for sure. Uh, that was just a really good show where you covered a lot of ground, uh, but but this idea that now uh, they're starting to to roll on the conservators. Yeah, this is just like. What's the headline on that? Uh, the headline was, uh, you know, he said we're going after not these corporations, but the clearing houses. And then within was, the body, uh, pre Barara. Barara, yeah. Well, then within the body, it's like, holy cow, because you say, well, no, we're going after the contractors. So the contractors under clearing houses are, of course, the local uh, conservator, the guardians of each county. They're, they're enabled by accident. So you have to understand this language. Contractors equates to the local conservator. The conservator is acting as a conservator for that corporate entity they person went, under the 14th bankrupt. Amendment. Yep, they went bankrupt in 1933. Right, so it's, it's all color Right, it's the law. one that's the holder of that estate. Okay, so to protect that estate, it's using human beings to produce and make money for that estate. While he, on the other side, spends money saying it's on behalf of a state, a life. And, and that's the whole perversion, the entire perversion. And now the federal state's coming down and saying, no, it's just these local conservatives. No, it's not. They were all enabled by acts of enablement with each state constitution. And then again, they were enabled with the United Nations Charter formulating another, yet another bank, another banking schematic. And so Barara, Preet Barara, is... Uh, Terrorizing Wall Street, according to Wall Street now. Yeah, it was but so funny. is he giving lip service, or is he actually going to come through for us? Because oh no, they don't get any benefit. You know, even when they put on presentations, the benefit all goes to the United States of being because they have the evidence themselves as a bankrupt corporation. That's the whole entire question. 
who's bankrupt? Is it humanity or is it the corporations that went bankrupt in 1933? Yeah, were you really born hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt? Right. Do you accept that? Yeah. I guess if you believe that, then you accept it, and you've chosen your form of government as per the Atlantic Charter. Right, and that goes all the way back to the 1666 Chesapeake Act. Are you going to be the debtor, lost at sea? Are you going to come in and say, holy crap, I'm not the bankrupt one, I'm real, I'm, I'm here. And so now we brought that full circle with the Chesapeake Cavai Act. And you'll notice that all these anti-sovereign citizen sites out there, which are a false flag, here, you know, they they want to bad mouth the Sister K. Vi Act. Yeah. But it, that's because it says in there that the revisioners, 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 they're they're all going to get everything taken away from them, and that's what you did last year in August. As soon as we evidenced fully that they were nothing but a fiction. They were all dancing cartoon members of a cartoon, little characters, fiduciary is a character of a trust, it's, it's all a fiction. We looked and looked and looked and looked and looked forever for a judge. We could not find a judge, and so we had no other option than to declare them dead as a court under 38 U.S.C. subsection 108. At that point in time, the reason that the clearing houses are under fire is that they had to start offsetting or discharging congressional bankruptcy using that dead entity. They haven't been. Yeah, the and the, yeah. This is. I mean, we won the case, but this is not over because these entities are kicking and screaming. Of course, no, we don't want to do that. Right. That doesn't sound good for us. Right. Uh, that hurts. Yeah, that's going to hurt us bad. And well, you're darn tootin'. It's going to hurt you bad, but. We, we caught you. We evidenced in the correct manner. Uh, well, so had, now we've you know we've had to you know it's been like pulling teeth getting right. getting this to be settled. They're still holding Rocco behind bars. Yep. Somebody's gonna have a huge, huge, huge liability there. Illinois or several like, are. Yeah, Illinois. Yeah, gone. Illinois, McHenry County. But Illinois is gone. It just wiped off the map because they can't afford Rocco's fee schedule and. They're so stupid. I've never seen anybody so stupid. And then now we're coming out in the news. We're, co we're coming after the conservators. Do -do -do. I'll just keep on doing my business just like I always have. And these idiots are just, they're slipping and falling because they're so reliant on the silent weapon. And that's something that was the most profound because it was to be used against humanity and to keep humanity busy. But then they started using it to gain these cases. So they put in these predetermined outcomes. They put in these little uh, functions and human factors. You know, this one says it's a female and it's a teacher and it has this much school left and it has this much money in this bank. And it spits out these situations, you know, and you've, you've uh, gone into depth on the descriptive introduction to... Uh, um, well, you don't even have to go into depth. That's why I just read the introduction because the introduction basically tells you everything. Now they get into the minute detail into the the whole writing there, but you you don't really need to go that far. You don't no. need to look that deep into these things no, to understand. It's, it's like the public law. It's like, uh, did you harm a human being? Uh, yes or no? I mean, that should be every question. Right. Uh, every time you get pulled over, do you have any evidence that I harmed any human being? Right. Okay. No. All right. I'm I'm leaving now. Right. And, uh, and because these are pirates uh, acting under um, letter of mark uh, right. as privateers to uh, pull citizens into the chute to discharge congressional bankruptcy once again. Right. And and that's that's the funniest part. Because you've been part. declared civilly dead, lost at sea, going right. back to the Sesta K. Vi Act. All right. Now we caught them all of all these things. Absolutely. And it says that the reversioners right. are to lose everything. everything. Lose the reversioners, Congress. Right. What does Congress have world dominion over? Uh, the world, uh, according to the Atlantic Charter, they right. gave themselves that authority. But now this is all turning around. Right. And uh, UN, it. remember? Okay, when you hear stories about the UN, UN was created by a congressional act. So UN is just another arm of Congress. Right. 
as is the CIA, as is National Security right. Administration, as in Department of Education. Right. And uh, all of these these means and mechanisms means and mechanisms to redirect monies that were otherwise intended for human beings out of the treasury. And that was the most profound, you know, and then all of that. Uh, and which was really an, another reason for the Sesta K Act back then. And so they right. had Same another, thing. they had a, a, a mechanism to embezzle. It was always the same thing. It was always the same thing. And this is the third time it happened. Go back to, to the 12 tables, if you don't believe me. The 12 tables of Nicaea. Right. Okay, there's 12 tables. They all okay. match up with code and statute and CFR. And yeah, but table four uh, gets into parents. Uh, Petri, uh, as the daddy is being the state, which is the same as the UCC four, which is the same as United States Code four fourteen twenty four. Yeah. Uh, same thing you'll find on uh, uh, local statutes probably. Uh, it, it's all the same thing over and over again. They just expanded out the twelve tables. Right. And it's always been the same thing, and you you really have to come out of the sea because Bo said it really succinctly just a few minutes ago, and I'm in my heart as well when he said there's one question: Have you ever harmed anybody under the public law? Well, that those are the gates of heaven. Those are the gates of heaven because bankruptcy or depravity is the word for somebody who has harmed a human being. They're depraved. That's how you become bankrupt. Not because your credit's bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see what they perverted? You haven't paid enough fictional money to offset right. this fictional debt that we have right. created for you through this uh, bankrupt government that we declared has rule over you as the king. Right. Now, so we did a video a couple months old now. You can still search it up on YouTube called The King's Bankruptcy. And that will explain a great deal of, you know, equating Congress as the king. Because Congress has come in basically and declared themselves the king. And it's the king's bankruptcy. But the king is using its plebeians to take care of its bankruptcy for it. And it does that by all sorts of things. And not least of which is harming human beings which it gave itself the right to do because nobody's ever held them accountable. And that's, that's all for national security. They're just following policy, folks. They're securing these four nations, which are corporations. Definition is in 28 U.S.C. subsection 1603, 1603. Uh, everything's written, and all of the evidence of their crimes are written. I'm not saying anything new. I'm not, you know, venturing into some theory somewhere. Everything is written. Their evidence is in their works in action. And we were able to evidence that in the case over and over again. And all of the case that, that, that are all the same claim, by the way, because we are all the United States of being. Right, and who specifically came in as a sovereign state is uh, the House of Jonathan and the House of Larson, which essentially uh, is uh, Rocco's house. And and so our cases in particular are uh, uniquely joined in that we all came in uh, under the public law as the United States in rem et al., Libertas, not use the word liberty because that's a word that is granted. Yeah, liberty is a franchise granted only within honors, and and we have evidence that, and we don't have to evidence anything. I mean, here I am. Last night it was so funny because somebody was going off on us. Remember, so so they were saying evidence that to me. Okay, in 1933, your corporation went bankrupt. Evidence that I'm bankrupt. In 1933, your corporation went bankrupt. Evidence that I'm bankrupt. Oh. Show me, prove to me that they're bankrupt. 
Okay. Proved to me that they're human trafficking. Uh, 1933, your corporation. Title 12, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. The Title 12 is your evidence that they did it. Yeah. You have a conservator in any county, a public guardian or conservator in every county. Why is this? Prove to me that my corporation is bigger. Show me that they're human trafficking. Show me that they're using human in, in the action of genocide. Um, in 1933, your corporation went bankrupt. And it, it, it just so profound you know okay show me more evidence okay go look up the QCIP number go to the small business administration which is formerly known as a small government loan uh, administration go there look up the QCIP and the debenture participation program and can tell me if a corporation can uh, enter into the debenture participation program or if a human being can because it's a debt secured by your own earning power. And what they've done is they've wrapped that millstone around the human being's neck rather than around the attorney's neck where it should be. The attorney, the attorney, the attorney. And last night, it was just profound. That guy was arguing with us, biting. He was whining and it was like revelation. Okay, let's, let's read from the, a few more of your headlines here. Uh, no judge wants the Joe Brown case. No, and, and he was up there again. Um, he says, I'm going to file a habeas corpus. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's just <laughs> a presentation. They, the CIA is just so... Him and Dean Clifford are in there together, <laughs> huh? <laughs> He's so funny. Have the body. Have this body. Have yeah, this yeah body. we're laughing because the uh, definition of... The habeas corpus is not what everybody is teaching you. Yeah. Like the rule of law, radio will tell you it's uh, a good thing, but it basically means here, here's the body. Right, have the body. It, it literally directs them to have the body. And, and somebody the filed a habeas corpus in uh, Dean Clifford's case on his right. behalf. Boy, and they're wondering why uh, he's not going anywhere. Right, right. And it's, it's just so profound because here well, he is. It's interesting because he has, seems to have part of the puzzle and that he knows not to bail out because uh, if he does that, he's contracting, which is a similar situation with well, well, Rocco. But that? Rocco is a sovereign state. He's evidenced that. Absolutely. Dean Clifford has evidenced himself as a citizen. And a man and various other things. Right. And, and um, but this judge Joe Brown. So what they did was they first presented that they charged him with contempt and made him look like a, a, a everyday citizen, you know. And and uh, he's really not. He's running for DA and all this stuff. And then uh, this new presentation, it's nothing but an oration. It's the same great rhetoric as it always has been. And I, I thought that was so profound that, you know, he would attempt such a feat when he's such a bad actor in the first place. But now. You know, these attorneys are so vile and vicious in their assault against us with placing us under these private acts and acts of commerce. And they write the policy and the manuals for procedures for these cops to enforce. Right. And as we see lately, the police brutality is just off the charts right. it is completely off the charts and everybody wants to put the blame completely on the police or the police departments right. the problem is though is that policy once again that they're contracted under to follow right and we, we were talking about this yesterday when we came across an article on um, that one was that video on I forgot the community, but these college community dorms. Yeah, else. the cops entered residence, handcuffed occupants without cause. Right, is the headline. And, and these cops go in there, and there, these kids were sleeping. College kids were sleeping. He says, "I woke up and I was, you know, I had a gun in my face. Somebody was dragging me out of my bed by my toe." And the cops are saying, "Well, your door was open and." We hollered like we're supposed to, according to our rule book. Nobody answered us, so that gave us the right to come in. Now, those yeah, attorneys... Yeah, the rule book. The rule book from the attorneys. And the cops are telling you, listen, please help me. The attorneys tell me that I have to go into your house. But the same attorneys fearmonger on the television programming and teach you that you're going to have an intruder. 
and teach you that you need to be armed, they're causing a civil war between police and citizens. And you have to realize what is happening when these poor cops, they're concerned. They're going into this place, they're concerned. Well, we didn't see anybody, we didn't hear anything, and so we're, we hollered into the door several times and nobody answered. At the moment they introduce themselves to a normal household bedroom or master bedroom, they would have been shot as intruders based on their rule book. And it's these attorneys that are killing both citizens and law enforcement officers by their rule books. And yeah, this one here is in the uh, they were University of Utah students. Um, I believe that's uh, that's uh, Clint's uh, Clint Richardson of uh, Corporation Nation. That's his uh, stomping grounds, and yeah. Uh, see, they said they were treated like criminals in their own home. Uh, just like you said, they entered because they got no response. Front door was open. Uh, Three unified officers said they found the door open and went in to investigate. Right, they get worried because the door's open. They're taught to be worried because the door's open by the attorneys. And, and the attorneys are trying to kill us all. It's sick. But then the way they handled it from there, it just, it just uh, escalated. Uh, let's see, they were handcuffed and interrogated in their own living room. And, you know, I mean, as it says, as soon as you see the situation, the guy in his underwear in bed, it's pretty obvious he's not a burglar. You'd be surprised how many calls we get of people who ended up at the other people's homes. Yeah, but that was a detective. That was the interesting thing about watching that uh, video because the FBI says, well, no, we want you to know that we get a lot of calls of open doors and, and burglars sleeping in their underwear in somebody else's beds. Come on, that's the FBI just telling people to, you know, take it up the keister and, and accept this. Because it's, it's normal for this to occur. That is absolutely not normal. And to teach that kind of thing is called urban pacification maneuvers. So apparently the cops got a little ticked off and one guy who's just waking up, you know, flipped him off from his bed and you know he he didn't know it was a cop at first he thought it was some uh, college prankster you know but well so anyways this is just the one situation that one of many situations where things get escalated because of the policy that these cops are given by their their corporate uh, uh, Council attorney handlers, the ones that write the policy, which are the same, the very same conservators. But and, and they're the same guys that now they'll get thrown under the bus. Then um, for essentially following policy, it seems like a Philadelphia police officer arrested on assault charges. This oh, is one of yours. Yeah, he really did assault him. That one was an evil one. Um, the the. He was backing up, and I guess he bumped into a citizen, and the citizen banged his hand on the the uh, trunk of the police car. So the cop got out and was very, very aggressive. Yes, uh, this was Edward Sawaki the third backed his car into a man, and the victim banged his hand on the trunk of the car. And so Wicky got out of his car, pulled up his shirt to show his city-issued handgun, and rushed at the victim, yelling racial epithets and threatening to kill him. Yeah, and you know, the longer they're cops, though, the more this mentality is that you must obey me because I got a badge and a gun. But not racial or anything, because that guy's actually psychopathic. If he can... Uh you know, intimate that somebody's so different and dehumanize them, then he's got something wrong with the frontal lobe. Right. But I'm saying that the attorneys keep him on this path. And, Absolutely. And so that was Philadelphia. Uh, let's see. We've got plenty of more I wanted to get to. And not least of which, if I can find the... Uh, 
the story. Uh, here's the router story we were talking about earlier. U.S. traders clearing. Um, let's see here. Oh, and the revelations about the mom killed by the Capitol cops uh, six months ago. Yeah, that one hurts. This is a very long, detailed story that came out about that. And, you know, essentially, they, they executed this woman for commercial crime. She never harmed anybody. They shot her in the back of the head. Essentially, she drove two more blocks after she was uh, shot in the back of the head. Uh, and this is the lady that was in the car with her her toddler child. Yes. And she hit a fence at the White House. She hit a White House fence, and that's what facilitated her death. They were protecting fences, but it, it got worse now that these uh, new reports are out. And it, it was saying that she was shot in the back of the head now. Uh, that's correct. Uh this is this occurred on October 3rd so this is how long it's taken to get this information out of these buggers for one thing which definitely pisses me off uh, the official police investigation still has not been released but Kerry family attorney Eric Sanders obtained the toxicology or tox yeah toxicology and autopsy report in the uh, macabre anniversary uh, let's see the report showed there were no drugs in her system prescription or otherwise when she was shot dead. And, and they said she was driving erratically she was trying to get away from them which what she was doing somebody was chasing her and we knew that back in October if you go back to the uh, we would have covered this in those uh, few weeks they had a government shutdown they had all of these things occurring all at the same time while they were executing these people now this one was actually on state employees well does it say that in this report but she was on state employee when they took her out I'm sure this is a pretty comprehensive story it's rather long I'm trying to read here get the uh, autopsy stuff uh, she was she was severely wounded in the back of the head. Sanders suspects that was the fatal shot, but adrenaline allowed her to drive to Maryland Avenue and Second Street, where her car crashed at a Capitol Police guard shack. She uh, was trying to get help from other police because she was being chased, and that's what we knew back then. And, and they had been hiding so many things. The report said. Kerry was shot numerous times, but not specify exactly how many. When Miriam's sister, Valerie Kerry, learned that her sister was shot and killed from the back, the former New York Police Department sergeant was too distraught to speak with WND on camera. Video, there's a video below on this. Uh, this is at WND, I'm reading this. The video uh, shows officers fired at least seven shots in a crowded public space after they inexplicably failed to block her car at the traffic circle. Right. They were trying to get her. She was a hit. Uh, let's see. She doesn't appear to be guilty of any act other than a panic attack. And we were told, or we are told, that Miss Carey was mentally ill. Although she had no medications in her vehicle, and those at her home back in Connecticut are sufficiently routine as to put uh, millions of other Americans in the category of legitimate target. But now, it's certified fact, Carrie did not even have prescription, prescription drugs in her system when she was shot to death. Even before that confirmation, it became clear months ago that there was no good explanation why Carrie was shot. And the story disappeared entirely off the mainstream media radar. In fact, no media other than WND showed up Thursday to a press conference Sanders announced. The event marked six months since the bizarre and deadly chain of events that were set in motion after Carrie strapped her baby girl into the back seat of her black Nissan Infiny, Infinity in Stamford, Connecticut, and drove 270 miles to Washington, D.C. Upon arriving, upon arriving, she apparently made 
a wrong turn into a White House entrance. So a wrong turn can get you executed by these corporate council policy enforcing thugs that you call law enforcement. I mean, she was on state employee too. There was other um, uh, relative information that is so important and integral to this because she was a target of an execution. And law enforcement, first of all, they're, they're uh, guarding fences. Uh, she didn't do anything wrongdoing. Um, she wasn't a threat to a human being. She had an infant in the car, a toddler in the car. All of these things that would uh, normally facilitate the de-escalation of force, and yet they still continued on with their agenda, and she was running from them. Um, and trying to flee from whoever was trying to harm her and the baby, um, something. And I'll update more as we go along because this. Uh, you can find the story. story, and there's actually a whole page here, and then two other pages, pictures, well, and your video. Story, when it first broke, there's Bono, Bono's Entertainment has a video up as well as as our shows because we were covering it at that time. Yeah, I don't know how, I don't recall how well we actually got into it, but uh, it becomes clear and clear that it was just a very tragic mishap, but uh, it, it, would, it would never, you know, be allowed to be facilitated under law enforcement that was adhering to public law. Okay, now then there's a video about this, uh, this is a viral video here uh, showing a U.S. policeman allegedly unlawfully arresting the neighbor uh, as I fight through these advertisements. Uh, the neighbor of one of his friends, okay, Denrell Bro, B R E A U X, and Eric Banagas were talking on uh, talking on the front veranda of Mr. Banagas, New Orleans home, when his neighbor came out to tell them to watch their language. So this is something that is all about. Language. Language. They were arrested for bad words. Is that what you're telling me? Well, let me go on. See, uh, Mr. Bro told Times uh, Picayune. Yeah, it's a major news source there. Okay. Yeah, what, well, this is New Orleans, is mm -hmm. it? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought so, these names. Uh, the belligerent neighbor then called the police after brief verbal confrontation. He threatens to call the police all the time about stuff in the backyard, stuff going on inside the house, Mr. Bro said. So he's got a neighbor that's a little beneficiary informant. Right, Nazi Germany. Yeah, police state. Things like there's too many cars in the driveway. Yeah, that's uh, true. Policeman then arrives and after speaking to the neighbor goes to immediately arrest Mr. Bro without any explanation. The video posted on Facebook begins with the policeman forcing his way into Mr. Banaga's home after demanding to see Mr. Bro's identification. Then he's grabbing my hoodie with handcuffs out. He said, let me see some ID and grabs my wrist. Says you're under arrest at the same time. So, you know, he's saying, saying show me your ID as he's putting handcuffs on him. You know, right. what kind of sense is that? Silvery. Uh I thought it was unlawful. The officer then pins Mr. Bro to the couch and tries to handcuff him. I'm scared, son, Mr. Bro says to his friend in the video. Aww. Sir, I'm asking you nicely, why are you doing this? When Mr. Bro begs the officer not to shoot him, policeman can be heard saying, I'll shoot you in the head. Oh, then you got to take that one out. He needs to be in Gitmo. Mr. Bro said the officer was a friend of his neighbor and had seen him at the house before his guest. Sick. These are personal friends, he said. That's sick. You can't treat any human like that over bad words. This is sick. Well, no, the guy that was in the room with him, not his neighbor, informant oh. guy. That's, uh, 
Yeah, so Mr. Bro was charged with battery of a police officer, resisting arrest and disturbing the oh. peace. And he never did anything wrong. And he never did anything wrong. No, this Absolutely is nothing. what these people are consenting to by being beneficiaries. Yeah. Like yeah, it. if somebody's in, you know, a neighbor like that that is calling 911 because you got too many cars in your driveway. You're an eyesore. That, that individual is a harm upon humanity. Yeah. Because he is inviting the... Uh, uh, privateers. Privateers come out and uh, shoot his neighbor for, um, you know, having an eyesore in his neighbor's yard. Right. So. He views human beings as less important than, than objects. And that's psychopathy. So, let's see. It goes on. The officer, uh, when he approached, he said he could smell marijuana. Nowhere, no marijuana was found in the house. And there's been no disciplinary action taken against the officer. Sick. No disciplinary action on the officer. Sick. When this guy is a psychopath and belongs in Gitmo. Absolutely. Send me that link so I have it for later. I did. Okay. Yep, it's in there. Okay. Uh, so, you know, mentality that is being instilled upon these corporate policy enforcers by these corporate council attorneys is just, is uh, you know... It, Man, I mean, and I was thinking about this earlier. All these cops that are working right now enforcing these commercial crimes for their corporate counsel, United States Inc. handlers, you know, I think they all need to go under the public law. We probably just need to have, have them all evaluated, okay? And... Ask and if they, and if they ever have harmed anybody, that's got to be investigated, and they need to be charged. But I, I'd say like 99% of law enforcement now needs to be replaced replaced with fresh blood. That's not military uh, trained uh, killing machines, and are, are properly trained in what the public law is and what is acceptable to enforce as far as a police officer and what is not and under the public law it's essentially only going to be things like have you harmed a human being somebody shot somebody okay. and that somebody that is the perpetrator of that crime because that would be an actual crime under the public law okay. that those cops need to round that that shooter up uh, ASAP right now right Okay, that that's a legitimate reason for law enforcement or slash the sheriff. The sheriffs of the old times were stewards of humanity, and there was there was no courts and attorneys to right. uh, litigate things out in court forever. Right. The word arrest means just stop. It means stop. The word arrest means S T O P. So. Uh, way back when, when the sheriff was only the steward of humanity, he would arrest people from doing whatever they were doing against mankind. Okay, so, you know, if, if there's a harm here, you remove the harm. You stop the harm. Arrest means to stop the harm. So, if a corporation is spitting out product while it's human trafficking, you stop the corporation. You arrest that corporation and stop it from doing anything else and, and part of that is of course under the civil forfeiture program for under the criminal code you know these things are, are already in place they're already there we didn't change any of their treaties they have bankruptcy to discharge I'm not denying that they're bankrupt we're live right now right right okay cats saying I thought you were having a show tonight we are we're on right now yeah I know I, I know others are saying they're listening well, I hope so. Okay. Well, anyways, all right. Yeah, so, it says we're streaming. Yeah. All right. Uh, back on track here. Let's see. Let's see here. Um, TulsaWorld.com. Tulsa police officer Tyrone Jenkins charged after sting operation. 
Right, they got an attorney. This is all around stemming from um, you a few weeks ago. You went off on Oklahoma. And ever since you went off on Oklahoma, they've been saying, no, we're the good guys. Look, we get, you know, we, we, we're we facilitating stings and, and catching law enforcement and charging attorneys. And stuff. They've murdered one person Shot a week for the last three weeks. Right. But on top of that, they're, they're saying they're holding people accountable. Which is what you're seeing now. They're trying to present this presentation that they're the good guy. They're they're absolutely horrifying, and and corporate counsel, you know, of course, is going down. Now those are the rules, um, of the exchequer. And you you've known you've been human trafficking, and there's there's no denying that. Um, it was normalized in Mr. Summers' head. You know, I I have to diagnose people before I can. Discharge congressional bankruptcy. Yeah, that this is just so commonplace in his head that he thinks that is something good for humanity. He thinks he's doing a good job, and that that's a that's a danger. He's a hunter. Yeah, and again, this is another situation where uh, I'm pulling up your link now, and it says um, that Tyrone Jenkins he was paid three one hundred dollars for providing confidential information, which he gave to an undercover officer prosecutor said uh, charge has been filed against Tulsa police officer who was arrested in connection with his alleged role in drug trafficking bribery That's a, and, 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 and this looks to be a man of uh, African American descent again they're going after th these uh, black cops first it yes, seems like and he was just doing his job he's an undercover agent so he'll do bribes whatever it takes to get the information that's what he's been taught to do and now they're charging him it's with just throwing him under the bus for doing his job right right and that's which what they been doing. wrote the policy for him to follow yes and this is what the attorneys do you have to go after the attorneys i don't want these cops and especially and the top of all, this is just this is just talking about uh, drug crimes, commercial yes, crimes. Yes, and the the racial connotation. These attorneys are absolutely racist. They do not want black people. They're killing us. That black you, and you, you know you don't see as many uh, African American uh, attorneys either. No, no, they're racist. Humanity is not racist. Psychopathy is racist, and they they are targeting black human beings and we have to stop them this is sick you know go back to 1924 go back to um, oh gosh uh, the racial integrity acts go back to the eugenics program the program that uh, Margaret Singer uh, initiated with Planned Parenthood these attorneys are absolutely horrifyingly racist against humanity number one number two blacks they target black people black humans and this has got to stop if everybody's separated they don't realize that if they're white they're sick something's wrong here we've got to get everybody on the same page this is sick president lincoln the slave yeah, yeah the, attor the attorneys i was going to say the attorneys started this this whole thing of uh Slavery. racial division by you know, throwing the... Uh, they made it legal for themselves to hold slaves. Yeah, to, for the slaves uh, to be introduced in the populace later. They probably knew eventually that they would just, you know, become uh, was, citizens. And, right. And then, you know, then they'd be able to cash in on the controversy of uh, created uh, division. Right, but the, it was the attorney, the plantation owners, that said, okay, it's legal to have slaves. These are attorneys. They're, they're owning us. And yeah. then at that time, we started fighting back. Go back so to they, George Washington. Right. He had a slave. Right. And, and these times, we start fighting back. And what do they do? Congress gets law enforcement in there and says, no, look, right here it says slavery is legal. So law enforcement is pit up against us. Doesn't that sound a lot familiar here? And it's the same civil war over and over and over again. This time, it's just really, really shiny wrapped up in all this shiny packaging, television programming, everything looks all hunky-dory. This is still the same war. Now, so it says, uh, First Assistant District Attorney Doug Drummond said, uh, at the same time, whether a person is a law enforcement officer or not, he must be held accountable under the law, yeah, meaning just, private acts and acts of commerce. Yeah, he's sick. Uh, 
Yeah, he's sick. And um, we have to says Jenkins is accused of using his city-owned computer to access confidential information. Well, how many times he's do you see student. that being normalized over and over again on the, these uh, cop reality shows or right, these and cop uh, shows, or even Grimm? Yes, he's an officer. During an investigation, his job is to get confidential information. These attorneys are turning on law enforcement. Yes. And it's terrifying. And I don't know. We're gonna have to find other jobs for them, though. The, the cops that are, <laughs> you know, still decent human beings. Yeah, we can I, I think most. I think most of them don't need to be in law enforcement under the public law. But they're just engineers. They're, they're social engineers. We just they won't need. They them. won't need to have. Uh, those those jobs, anyways, under once we facilitate the general welfare, the gen, yeah, the general welfare clause. This is another big thing. Probably should have mentioned at the top of the show when we were trying to give an overview of the public law and what we're trying to uh, facilitate here, and that is facilitation of the general welfare clause. Which again, these the constitution tards uh, seem to forget about. Uh, you know, they've accepted the fact that uh, corporate welfare is okay. Uh, well, I mean, they don't accept it as being okay, but they don't hold it to the same standard that the, 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 the thing actually was intended for. Right, the original contract. Was it was intended for us to, uh, you know, be uh, beneficiaries or right. have, have, have uh, the fruits of the corporations being here for allowing them to exist in the first place right. and they were to pay the taxes not human beings right general welfare they were to the eight percent tax was supposed to go back to people yeah. not and people it, paying right. the taxes so corporations can go on polluting your environment it's and fracking you. your uh you know, uh, for oil and, and natural gas and destroying the water tables and, and polluting the planet with uh, radiation. Right, and habitat. Use the word habitat because uh, people don't realize that they're animals and their habitat has been poisoned by attorneys. Yes. This is a an infection. Attorneys are like an infection on the planet. They, they're not the same being. They're the devolved species of human. They're not human. They don't have a frontal lobe. Uh, psychopathy is missing the frontal lobe. And, and you need to realize that your habitat is been poisoned by this, by this sick. Uh, it's a plague. The the attorneys are a plague. They're they're not good at all. They they wear nice suits and maybe put on a really good presentation and and orate like you wouldn't believe. You know, a blah blah is great at oration and and uh, so is Biden. But they they're just poison. They're they're not good for you. Mm. Nope. Uh, let's see here. I don't know. You had some other links from routers. I can't tell exactly what they are. So I pull them up, I guess. Oh, uh, all the banking stuff that's happening today. I mean, it's U.S. Congress, fun. Justice. Let's see. High speed. Let's see what this says. Uh, oh, they're saying they're going to triple our, our internet speed here. Soon. High speed trading, Attorney General says. Oh, oh it's oh, got a picture oh. holder. Oh, yeah. That one is, is, was very interesting. So uh, somebody's being set up for insider trading. Uh, high speed trading is is being investigated according to uh, Attorney General Holder and it's it's been really uh, these things are interesting. The US Justice Department is investigating high speed trading for possible insider trading. Attorney General Eric Holder told lawmakers on Friday. Right. Uh private acts and acts of commerce Absolutely. lawmakers. Absolutely. Uh the disclosure because we're lawmakers. Right. We're making we're we're making the new law in this new court of the Assisi. Right. With the public law, right. and we're saying, quit harming humanity. Right. Uh, let's see. The disclosure comes the same week that the regulators and the FBI also confirmed they are looking into potential wrongdoing by high-frequency stock traders. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You got to hold them accountable, not the attorneys. You, you want to look at somewhere else. You know, don't don't look at the attorneys. Don't look at the attorneys, look at the accountants. Don't look at the accountants, look at the psychiatrists. Of course, yeah, of course he wants them to look yeah. elsewhere since he's the U.S. Attorney, attorney General, General under the 28 U.S.C., which is the Judiciary Act that created him to discharge congressional bankruptcy and, and, and you know, 
This is what it looks like when they have their tail between their legs and they're looking for a way out. Okay. It's interesting how they turn on each other. Oh, so. we're doing stuff that's good. We're investigating. We're looking into this stuff. Oh, we don't know who to blame yet. Yeah. Meeny, miny, mo. This has been interesting to watch. There's a lot of banking stuff. Uh, they're they're promising the sheeple that they're going to triple the internet speed. I thought that was what you were talking about earlier. Cause I, it said that come across CNN earlier. And um, okay, we got a uh, text question from one of our listeners it says. Uh, why it says Neanderthals are extinct on the Wikipedia page. Right, it's always going to say that. Um, they've been. Who writes the Wikipedia pages? Yeah, anybody. And, and um, not only that, go back into the actual um, skull measurements, everything else. Cromagnon doesn't have a frontal lobe, it's not the evolved species. Uh, the story went that Crow and Neanderthal had a big fight years and years ago. You know, this is. A long, long time ago, and, and so far out of your memory, and, and uh, Neanderthal lost. Well, okay, so then humankind would not exist because they evolved species. The one with empathy, the one with compassion, and the uh, behavior of Neanderthal does not exist, right? I mean, I'm looking at. Then, I, yeah, the correct modern pronunciation is actually Neanderthal. Right. That. H, they removed that H for some reason yeah. from when, when I learned about it as a kid in school back when. Okay, what about this one here? Former bank CEO and president charged with bank fraud, conspiracy, and perjury. Oh, yeah, that was in that San was Francisco. In, it was in San Francisco. I don't know if I read that one or if you sent that to me because I don't think I got to it yet. Uh, okay. That was... um. Did I send that to you, or you sent it? You that? sent it, yeah. I'm oh. still looking at yours, I think. Hold on, uh, let me go look at it then and see what it was. But we've got plenty of others here, too. And Perkin Hickson, ex Evercore banker, to plead guilty to insider trading. Oh, that was in that block today from Reuters. I was looking at uh, Reuters and other ones. Um, everybody's a- being nailed at this time. Uh, that's Evercore. They're really shaking down Evercore right now. There was another one. Uh, Powerful Wall Street investment banker, yeah. which means law firm attorney, probably. Uh, yeah, can we can we find out if this guy? We should find out if this guy's an attorney. If he's not an attorney, uh, others on the board members are, I'm sure. Right. Um, right. And he could just be a little banker, one that's pushing buttons. Who knows? But the but he attorneys, pleaded guilty. Oh, uh, yeah. He's probably not an attorney then. Uh, senior former Evercore partner, senior managing director, used illegal inside information from 2010 to 2013 to trade shares through accounts of an ex-girlfriend and his father to net nearly $1 million in profits prosecutors charged in a February 21st complaint. Yeah. He's a fog guy. Okay, so we got a fog guy there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the earlier story, then former banker CEO and president charged with bank fraud, conspiracy, and perjury, says San Francisco, California, April 2nd, and indictment was unsealed, charging Poppy Metexas, the former chief oh, executive yeah, officer and, and president of Gateway Bank, FSB Gateway, with bank fraud, bank fraud, conspiracy, and perjury, according to the indictment in 2009. Texas, uh, Medexas, uh, how you ever pronounce that? It looks like uh, Met Texas. Uh, fraudulently caused Gateway to execute a sham round trip transaction in which the bank self funded a down payment to make it appear the Gateway had sold toxic non performing mortgage loans. This morning, the defendant surrendered to federal agents. In California, who was arraigned at the federal courthouse in San Francisco, California. Right, and that's one of the funniest ones because the level of depravity of all of these attorneys and everything, those are toxic loads. They're bankrupt. And so they're not uh, producing until they're uh, bored again. And that that was interesting for me. Sorry, I didn't remember about uh, what that was today. We were quite busy, but um, that was one of the most interesting things coming across. Uh, the news feeds today. 
along with the clearing houses and oh the yeah characters. and just other crazy over the top ridiculous stuff did, did you did you see that one headline nine month old baby accused of plotting murder yes that's so sad because we've been in um india with our advocacy and this is well well before um i even met you uh we were with uh, save indian family foundation now the attorneys have a really good schematic over there on raising estates and they have a law in their in their statutes that says if a female dies within six years of being married say she gets a divorce and they've been divorced five years if she dies of cancer or whatever else this allows her family and and everyone in the community to come in on a dowry harassment case which is a lot like a, a personal protection order here or a domestic violence claim and they can arrest whoever and this these are attorneys that have allowed this nine month old baby to be arrested on top of festering uh, you how, know, do you, how, how do you even find handcuffs for a baby you don't have to the attorneys are the one tricking everybody out and and what we're seeing we're seeing a culture when, when you're in westernized thought over here we're seeing a culture how dare they arrest it nine month old babies this is attorneys directing their arrest of babies this is also attorneys murdering females just exactly identical to the Muslim females years ago when I first went into India Pakistan and all of these places with my advocacy I had um, Hindu and Sikh um, you know brothers and sisters of course and and my Muslim brothers and sisters they don't want to talk to anybody they don't want to deal with them and they're like did you know Tammy that um, uh, men in Muslim communities are burning their widows after death in order to prevent her from getting her inheritance okay now the story is is it dead men are killing their wives or really is it the attorneys killing females burning them alive for Christ's sake and sheeple are so dumbed down by this goddamn media that they can even conceive well, they're on yeah, top. Yeah. They're on top. Broadcasting Board of Governors is on top of the governmental pyramid. Well, anyone who can tolerate the arrest of a nine-month-old at the behest of an attorney should be just shot. Anyone who can tolerate an attorney burning a female to death in order they're really to... Push, they're pushing the limits, aren't they? they? They're vicious. They're absolutely monstrous they need to be removed from the ability to harm any further there are only predators this is sick. we don't have any other predators you know now it's not if, a, if a bear kills somebody that's not because he's your predator it's because you, you know he, he's you, hungry yeah well you met up with him in a bad time right. uh, uh if you're out there in the wilderness with a bear it's one thing but uh, we're sitting in our homes and the attorneys are still coming after us right and they prey us on us in the nicest of ways through the Department of Health and Human Rights. And they smile, and they've got such nice language, like you were talking about. Uh, oh, Baba uh, has a uh, very good uh, speechifying technique. Uh, here's a Virginia Beach lawyer. And again, a lawyer is an attorney. A lawyer is a nice word for attorney. We don't use the word lawyer here on the public law. Because it stems from the word attorney, which means to turn you over to another father and to pay homage to another lord but a virginia beach attorney has been charged in federal court with misappropriating more than two million dollars in client money right dr another r one. flynn 44 of norfolk has already had his law license suspended ah and is facing a civil lawsuit of the same allegations another one preying on the elderly they just that's all they do is prey on us they prey on human beings. It doesn't matter how old you are. They're, they're pilfering the elderly. They're pro pilfering children, tricking out children through court process, charging pedophiles for the use of babies' bodies. My God, it's prostitution. So we have attorneys uh, arresting babies, burning babies, killing babies, and then on the same side... Uh, the media is still saying, well, you better go on and get an attorney. Yeah. It's the media that is 
basically run by the Broadcasting Board of Governors, which is a bunch of, of attorneys. So who do you think the media is going to protect? Maybe attorneys? Of course. Uh, then I got this one from Black List of News. This one here was just totally... Oh, gosh. I mean, let me just read it. Botched a drug raid? No problem. Just seal the warrant, citizen complaint, and gag order itself. Aww. And so yeah. what happened apparently is, you know, uh, it starts out the article by saying anyone can make a mistake. Best solution is to acknowledge it. Make amends if needed and move forward striving to learn from experience. Far too many entities opt instead for bluster, obfuscation, and intimidation rather than deal with consequences of their screw-up. In other words, accepting uh, accountability. This is especially true for law enforcement agencies who often use everything in their power to avoid having to admit anything went wrong, much less take responsibility for it. Here's what went wrong recently to the detriment of a person who happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time in his own house. Uh, a Benedict Avenue resident contends Heron County deputies forced their way into his home Tuesday without a search warrant. John Collins, who lives in one unit of a triplex home at 114 Benedict Avenue, contends deputies got the wrong address. When they executed a search warrant, the warrant was for the unit next to his. Yeah. Deputies handcuffed him and left him lying on the floor in his unit for 20 minutes after they realized the mistake. For 20 minutes after they realized the mistake. Oh, oh we got a guy here on handcuffs on the floor. It's the wrong guy. What are we going to do? Well, we better stand around and talk about it for 20 minutes. Uh, call, let's call up the uh, attorney and see what he says to do. Right, and they were going to get somebody else before that for, for a commercial crime, too. So you have to... You have to stop them in that mindset in the first place. Yeah. Sick. So it gets worse. They tore through his home. After cuffing him and forcing him to the floor, floor face down, they searched my whole house, he says, pulled stuff out of my closet, broke a couple of knickknacks. One deputy also stepped on his tablet, shattering its screen. Another broke a ceramic decoration that once belonged to his now deceased son. Uh, two deputies must have realized the mistake, Colin said, because they recognized him from their school days oh. and had to have known he was not the man identified in the search warrant. The deputies went next door, he said. They made contact with a resident there who were later arrested for drug trafficking. But six or so other deputies continued searching his home. Oh, that's on the behest of corporate counsel. So they were told to loot it. The told well, you made a, uh, you, you went to the wrong home. Uh, you better see if you can find something yep. on them so we can pull our asses out of this one. Right. This is on you guys now. This isn't me. Right. Find something. Bloody knife, drug paraphernalia, whatever. Just find something. Smelly right. underwear. Right. It's just sick. sick. Uh, it, Corporate counsel is just such a horrifying thing. Let's see. Uh, Huron County Common. Uh, Police Court Judge Timothy Cardwell issued a secret gag order March 21st to seal the search warrant. The gag order is also secret. Right. Cardwell's court clerk said after the register asked for a copy of the order. Right. Yeah, because they're not offsetting congressional bankruptcy the right way. They're not taking the right bankrupt individual. So they're going to seal those documents and hide the evidence that they're trying to traffic human beings to discharge congressional bankruptcy now that they're all under fire. It's not going to work. Uh, there's a media report of stuff that you just did. Might, might want to think about your propaganda again. It's kind of biting you in the ass for now. Even Collins' complaint itself is now under seal, and the Sheriff's Department is circling the wagons, circling the wagons digging a moat around the circle and filling the moat with blustery statements and unanswered phones. First, the department flat out denied it had done anything wrong. It wasn't us. Awesome. Was calling nice. Colin's story a rumor that was highly inaccurate. Yeah. And who knows, maybe that would still be up for debate, 
But then the department went and had the complaint sealed wow. and the warrant and the gag order itself. It also issued a contradictory statement a few days later. We finished a search warrant at 114 Half Benedict Avenue. He said Thursday, our next move was uh, then was to check on an individual who may have a warrant in close proximity. God. Patrick said deputies became aware of warrants for an individual in close proximity, which was next door. Right. But now it's your dad. Now the story has changed. According to this Shit. narrative, the department supposedly had a warrant for Collins' address, but then decided to pursue a different warrant after tossing the first house for 20 minutes while its resident lay face down on the floor handcuffed. Yeah. Warrant news must travel really slowly in Huron County, though. Yeah. The warrant that deputies became aware of during their search of the wrong address was issued in 2012. Yeah. From yeah. that point on, the department, wisely or at least close to wise as any of this gets, decided to cut the lines of communication as Matt Westerhold of the Sandusky Register notes in the description of the department's Plan B. Oh, good. So they left the officers holding the bag. As Sheriff Howard's spokesman... Make yourself as unavailable and be unfriendly as possible to any reporter who has questions about the inconsistent story you're trying to make sure the public hears. Yeah. Still, the department, via Captain <coughs> Ted Patrick, continues to insist that it had done nothing wrong. Absolutely not. But, but it's completely unwilling to provide any evidence to back that assertion up. Right. Instead, it expects to just push its way through the mess created without ever having to explain exactly uh, what went on that night, all with the implicit blessing of a local judge. Absolutely. Corporate counsel, come on. We, we just, we can't get any more information. They've got gag orders, everything. I just, we got to keep our lips shut. We don't want to talk about corporate counsel. No, 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 no. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah, I had to read that one in its entirety because just, and this goes on all the time. How many of these have gone unreported before now? Uh, who knows? Okay, this is a good one, too, uh, you gave me. And it says, oops, moment for Senator Oh, yeah, they made him look, they painted him, look at him. He looks like a, a, a This is Indiana State Senator, right? Yeah, he's decrepit. And Dan Coates. Yeah. He shows up at wrong hearing. Well, talk about what he said, and look at the video, because it looks like he's drunk or high or something. <laughs> he didn't know where he was. Uh, let's see, so the Republican Senator from Indiana is, uh, is jokingly blaming Russia for his showing up and questioning of a witness at the wrong subcommittee hearing. It's insane. Okay, yeah, so, so it's mostly in the video. Did you watch the video? I didn't yeah. watch it yet. They made him look like he was absolutely out of his mind, too old to even think. Um, it was just, it was very interesting to see him rolling on him. Yeah, there's some other Indiana state representatives that I think that are much more deserved of some attention, but uh, I digress. We'll get, we'll, they'll get them. They'll get them. They're, they're, they're all Congress. So, I mean, well, you know, I mean, I heard the diatribe earlier on Fox News today as I was listening to some corporate radio, and they were saying that, you know, that uh, the third, a, a rise of a real third party would be a serious problem. Yeah. No, you know who's the problem? Congress, Congress, and Congress. And that would be Republicans, Democrats, and uh, Independent. Or any other third party. It's all Congress. The problem is Congress. How can you have good Congress? Do you have good transgressors? Do you have somebody that uh, beats you with the whip better than the other guy? Properly human trafficking. I'm oh, not, Judge not Simon, right out of my case. You can read that. In those uh, documents, I told you to go read it, uh, choose your side. Uh, the, the United States District Court Judge Philip Simon says he knows how to properly human traffic human beings. It's in my case. 
No, it was absolutely profound. They were dumbasses. And everybody's like, oh, you guys don't have authority as a court. Yes, we did. We, we, we do. We kicked their asses. They're retarded. I'm sorry. Your government is retarded. We recused them. They got another judge. Yes, and then he do. comes back again with this, right? And, and we didn't ask for a recusal. <laughs> we said, we, you can't even hear this because you're with an oath under 28 U.S.C. 450, subsection 453, you have an oath to discharge congressional bankruptcy. You can't even hear this case. Okay, and, and Simon, or just, uh, not just Simon, it was Chef Law and all of them. Your government, to all the sheeple out there, your government is retarded. They lost the case. I'm sorry, it's not my fault. You go deal with your educational system, your indoctrination system, whatever you need to do, but don't blame us for your government being so retarded. Yeah, Sorry, absolutely sure ridiculous. Yeah, walking hat and ride short buses because that's what it is. Especially, you know, Simon and and uh, Seward, they were the funniest in the whole thing. NBC News: Detroit man attacked after accidentally hitting boy with his pickup. Now this kid. Ran out in front of him. There was no way he could have stopped. Oh. But a bunch of kids that saw it happen took it upon themselves to proceed to beat the crap out of this 56-year-old guy. Uh, it's kind of a sad story all the way around. I'm not really sure what uh, I can even teach about this other than that, okay, even though... In my opinion, it looks like these kids, these juveniles, you know, attacked this man really for no valid reason. They did. Their, their ten-year-old friend just happened to, you know, walk out in front of the truck and got him, you know, basically in, in an accident. Uh, he got a broken leg. He's okay. I, I mean, well, his broken leg's bad, but uh, at least, you know, what was interesting about this show, it at least shows the potential that we can self-govern, uh, enforce law, or enforce the public law anyways, ourselves. Right. And but these kids were wrong, him. though, I think, to beat this guy up. Well, I don't know. It depends on what the accident was. Because if he's going, you know, he's in a bullet, first of all. You do have to be in control of your vessel at all time. At all time. It's your responsibility if you hit anybody or anything, blah, blah, blah. So you need to be in control at all time. It depends on the weather. It depends on the, you know, the um, ambience at the time. But, you know, I've, at times... Well, what, it said, what it says is uh, uh, a young boy stepped off the curb and into the path of his pickup truck. And so he stepped out in front of the truck. Right. It was an accident. Right, an accident. Kids need to be told over and over and over again to look both ways before you cross the road. Right. Because they, they won't remember. They'll forget in a heartbeat. Right. Um, okay, so anyways, that was in Detroit. And let's see. In Chicago, woman's face shattered by cop and cell following DUI. Oh, I didn't get a chance to watch that one, but you told me about it earlier. And it was interesting, but I, I didn't get a chance to. Uh, well, she was passed out in her car. Okay. And so she must have decided that she was maybe too drunk to drive or too sleepy, pulled over. You know, cop actually saw her there and, and, and woke her up, right? Right. Uh, let's see. Chicago woman is sued village of Skokie. Now she's, she's suing them now. Good. And and one of its police officers alleging she was seriously injured after being shoved headfirst into a jail cell bench after a drunken driving arrest last Sick. winter. Sick. And she wasn't even driving. She was passed out. And that's not harming anybody. As long as she's out of the, the roadway, the, you know, public places are public places. They're for people to rest in. Homeless people, whatever else people... They're there for the people. They're not for corporations, okay? They're not for banks. They're not for attorneys. They're not for anything else. So she was passed out in her truck. Now, now, arrested for what? Because she wasn't drinking and driving. She was sleeping in yeah. a public place. Yeah, and they show this video, by the way. It's on uh, 
I don't really recommend we watch these guys, but the Young Turks had the video of it. And Cassandra Fierstein, 47, said in a federal lawsuit that the incident required facial reconstructive surgery oh my God. and the insertion of a titanium plate to replace the bones that had been shattered. Oh, my God. They, she's a 110-pound uh, woman, and after she asked to make a phone call to let her husband and children know, which is the one phone call you're supposed to get according to the private acts and acts of commerce anyways, uh, the cop then throws her into the cell, uh, face first, he throws her in there so hard, she's just a little woman, right, and um, she, she uh, went face first into that concrete uh, bench they give them to sleep on. God. And it shattered, yeah, it shattered her bones there. Uh, part of the alleged incident was recorded on jail video cameras. That's the one I told you can find over at Young Turks. And the video speaks for itself. Yeah, she does nothing to justify what this male police officer does. In a written statement released today, village manager Albert Rigoni said, The village has deep concern for Ms. Cassandra. Fear of Stain's injuries that occurred at the Skokie Police Station. Oh, they got deep concerns, dude. Yeah, that's Yeah, they got deep concerns for the lawsuit against him, I suppose, yeah, is what he's he a means. He's conservative for the county here, or the municipality. Oh, yeah, okay, I guess he would be right. Um, let's see. The statement said that an officer involved has been placed on station duty with no contact with the public. Well, both the village and the state's attorney investigate. Absolutely. Oh, corporate boy, and thank God attorneys are investigating this. And, and corporate counsel's on the ball, and he's rolling on the cops, and he's saying, well, it's just this cop. But that is corporate policy. That is what he directs. That's what the rule book directs. They direct that passed out people are just dehumanized. They're not supposed to be there. That's public property, according to their rule books. Now, all of these sick and twisted thoughts have to go out of your mind. That is human property. Public property means it's for human beings. It's to sleep on. It's to walk on. It's to enjoy. Public property is not for corporations, and it is not for attorneys to enjoy. That's your property. You're supposed to be there. You're not toxic. You're not poison. You're not a cockroach like these attorneys. Those are your places that corporate security officers are kicking you out of and crushing your faces in for sick. And, and corporate counsel's here. The manager, the city manager, is here saying, "Oh, it's the cops. We're 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 right on the ball here. We're doing something against the cops." When it's the city manager's policy. To do that kind of thing to females. Little tiny females. Uh, let's see. So she was arrested for drunken driving March 10th. According to Hamilton court documents. The video shows officers searching her inside the jail cell. Where she appears to be asked to remove her boots and bra. Before being removed from the cell for additional processing. An officer then takes Fierstein by the arm. And appears to push her back into the cell. The video shows Fierstein falling forward. And striking her head and face on a bench. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think those benches are concrete. Oh, this is awful. Before officers and paramedics tend to her as a pool of blood spreads on the floor. God. If this was a tavern fight, which of course it wasn't, it'd be like she got sucker punched, Hamilton said. In addition to a drunken driving charge, Fierstein was charged with resisting a police officer. A Cook County court document filed by police said Fierstein knowingly resisted. How can you knowingly resist if you're drunk? In that she pulled away from the officer and placed both hands on the sides of the cell door, all in an attempt not to be placed in the holding cell. The lawsuit also alleges the officer made false statements to others in the Skokie Police Department about why he pushed Fierstein into the cell, causing his fellow officers to write false reports on the incident. So there's your ratifying agency. Yeah. He told somebody else, and they wrote a report on basically what he told them, right? Right. That's right. how. That's how. Uh, and corporate counsel that's, is getting all the way out of this one. He's yeah. just taking all the blame against himself and putting it on the law enforcement. It needs to go right on these attorneys that are dehumanizing human beings, 
to, for the protection of corporations. And what's sad is she pleaded guilty to the DUI charge. Sick. The county officials dropped the resisting arrest charges. She couldn't have. The lawsuit seeks unspecified amounts of damages. Village said other officers who were present at the time of the alleged incident, both male and female, have been interviewed and treated Ms. Fierstein with professionalism and respect. Isn't that nice? The village values the police department's high professional standards and reputation and is deeply concerned about this isolated incident. Isolated, yeah. The statement check continued. Their, check out their Moody's reports and see what they're trading on Moody's and see, see what their reputation is because the higher ratings you've got on Moody's and Standards and Poor, the, the better you are at human trafficking. And these corporate counsel attorneys need to just go away. They need to be in Gitmo. They need to be away from humanity. Sick. Sick. Yes. I mean, and I'm, I'm leading up to some, uh, where's this other one at here? Uh, oh, goodness. It's not in here now as I thought it was. There was one, there was a story uh, about the kid that was building a treehouse oh. and... And and cops came and uh, stuck a gun in his face. And were you know making profane and lewd uh, you know remarks. You know how cops talk. We we got the audio of that uh, U.S. marshal jerk that uh, that yeah that said Rockle was resisting arrest as as they're tasing him to death and okay. and uh, you know God knows what else. Uh, we can only hear. Uh, the recording and Rocco hasn't been able to talk about it openly, but we will get to the bottom of that. Uh, they all talk like this. They all have bad language, you know. And not that that's really, you know, something that should be addressed under the public law. Uh, however, these are supposed to be a higher standard of people. Right, character. We're supposed to be able to. They want people to look up to them, but their language is worse than what you hear in the ghetto. And I've worked out with some of these cops down at the gym before, and I hear this all the time. Uh, they are absolutely the most foul, sick, and twisted speaking uh, individuals that you'll ever hear. Uh they're complete womanizers and demeaning in the most, you know, sickest manners towards uh, females. And, you know, it's no wonder they have the most uh, domestic problems and the highest divorce rates, more than citizens even. Of course, a lot of them, uh, I feel sorry for them because they were, most of them are war vets. Fatherless. But they... They agreed to a uh, contract with the daddy state and go be a killing machine at the behest of the attorneys that run the United States, Inc. Uh, so how sorry for him do I have to be? I mean, but on the other hand, again, you know, I mean, play both sides of this, but they're brainwashed all through school. You're going to be patriotic, pledge allegiance to the flag. Uh, I want to do some good for my country. So I'm go over there and, and kill brown people to make the world safer for fractional reserve banking. But they're not told that in that manner. So, uh, I don't know, it's, it's just a very sad situation and product of a lot of social engineering over many, many years. And uh, it, it's got to stop, though, because it, it, you hear the reports of what what military personnel are actually doing over there killing women and children you know innocents many in, innocents are killed and the attorneys just call that collateral damage right because the attorneys are the only one benefiting from war all wars are bankers wars the attorneys are all the wars only are attorneys wars you mean right they are bankers and and that's what wars are over is introducing banking into these uh, war zones 
that otherwise don't know what banking is and the attorneys introduce all of these things and codify everything and tell people well, your house isn't up to code and so it's okay to bulldoze it like they're doing in the uh, Palestinian uh, country and, and um, just targeting and then they blame it on these different titles Israel, it's Israel this Congress is Israel the false Jew is Congress it's up there you know, whoever follows the Talmud, it doesn't matter if you're white or or any other color. It's a Talmudic Jew, and the and these things have. It, it's just been profound since Rome, since Westphalia, since this game has been played over and over and over again. And you know, these are. You know, terrifying days, you know, again, to witness as this plays out because they've done this so many times before and they're just as vicious then as they are now. These attorneys are, are a monstrosity that they have to be removed from humanity. Otherwise, this is repeated again and again and again and again. And human beings get counted like... You know, they do actuaries, and um, you know you're you're weighed and measured as to your productivity and your productive value, and you know then you're weighed and measured again. Oh, we can't give you a heart transplant because you've got Down syndrome. You're not going to produce for the corporation, so we don't. Your life is less important than somebody else's, and um, you're low income, so you, your life is less important than somebody else's, and it's completely absolutely perverted survival of the fittest and twisted it around to maintain that survival of the fittest is the one with the fatter pocketbook and that is not relative to any biology or the survival of any biology if lions did that it would maintain the extinction of, of the lion population yeah you heard me only ratifying agent and the cat it's just been you know now we're at the the, the choice choose your side um, this is all I can do I can tell you what it does and I can show you what it does and I can show you what it did in the past and what it did the time before I can show you the pattern of behavior that led up to that time before, and and I have done, you know, all over my Facebook and my YouTube, Bonos Entertainment, all of our archives, this is all we talk about, and um, these things are, it's time to choose your side. <laughs> oh, he's mad at me because I didn't put him the right way, I guess. Okay, well, I had... Yeah, sorry, I had to. Uh, I, there was a few other stories I couldn't find here. I had to go dig back up. Uh, one I covered on YouTube earlier: a LAPD officer accused of hitting teen, a relative of his, for poor grades. Right. So he beat the crap out of this kid because he got poor grades. This is a cost mentality. This is a uh, Fulton, California, LAPD officer Daniel Hun Chun, thirty-nine years old. Uh, using a variety of household items to hit a teenage boy in the shoulders, back, and buttocks, leaving welts and bruises uh, on the victim. This is, goes back to March 13th. And so th this is the kind of mentality, though, that these guys now have. For whatever reason, most of them just have this mentality. Look at the educational system itself. It's teaching people that that's a sign of status. That's a sign of... Of who you are. Good grades indicate who you are. You can't get in a good college if you don't get good grades. You'll never be anything if you don't get good grades. And so this promotes to the human mind dehumanization. So you become worth less than a grade. Yes. That is one of the eight stages of genocide perpetrated by the attorney through the action right. of psychiatry. And again, you know, cops are not of the highest IQ usually and they're easily indoctrinated with uh, with the with the 
corporate council attorneys and uh, policies is teaching them, you right, know. And and you can find that all the way back to the year 2000. The court ordered that cops are required to have low IQ so that they can be manipulated by the attorney. Yeah, it goes back to an old ABC News story. Right. And, okay, I guess more on that, that uh, fifth grader... You know, and this is in... Oh, in the tree house. Yeah, the cop pulls gun it. on fifth graders building a tree for it. It's, it's unfortunately just a video. I don't have a story to read on it. I did watch the video on it, of it earlier. And the kid was luckily smart enough to just... Uh, he said something to the fact that I just did what he says because I didn't feel like getting shot today. Right, neutralize the situation. And that, and that's good. I mean, our children are a lot smarter than, than a lot of us, you know. But we think of what they're going to be thinking of cops now. Right. It's sad. This is terrifying. That's the urban pacification. This little boy was just traumatized by a corporate security officer, called out by corporate counsel. Again. And, and now, how is he going to produce after this traumatization? That's PTSD. So Anybody they, in a war zone would feel PTSD at that point. So they build, you know, to build this tree house, they had, had to cut some limbs off the tree. Um... This is not a violation of the public law, though, of course. I think somebody called 911 on a kid, yeah. so we got an informant Another there. Another informant that hates children. Yeah. Uh, can't go out and talk to the parents of children and try to work this out without calling daddy government in there with the corporate... Uh, guns. Uh, policy enforcement thugs with guns. Sticking a gun on a fifth grader. My baby. Like the, like, like, like the, like, yeah, like, like the baby's... Uh, gonna be a threat you know uh geez oh Pete, it's just this this story does make me sick but this is henry county oh shoot where was it henry county uh i want to say like illinois somewhere um not i'm not sure but but there's another one here that really gets gets my anger up here too um and everybody is uh <laughs> hating these things you know these these same cops that we've been talking about that have been doing this stuff uh now the attorneys want to give them all these drones to use in their arsenal that was and we've got this one 375 pound military drone crashes near pennsylvania elementary school now, I'm going to say this publicly, and I'm going to say this one time and one time only. If you cannot control your toys, and they are a threat to humankind, get them out of the air. If your toys, if your things are falling that close to children, get them out of the air and get away from my children. Period. Uh, we're not going to tolerate this crap. Drones are one thing. Falling drones are, are a separate issue altogether. Drones are not lawful. If you want a civil war, then you're going to have to produce a civil war all by yourself. These attorneys all belong in Gitmo for legalizing these tools of war against humankind. Yeah, and they're, you know, I've been using them over there on People overseas, of course, people over here, they don't see that. Yeah, that's okay, that's okay. But now we have 375-pound RQ-7 Shadow operated by the Pennsylvania Army National Guard that fell right next to an elementary school. What was it now, how many school? kids would have died if the dang thing had uh, hit the school? Why was that even around a school? Why was that around any place where children are in congregation? Sick. Lebanon, Lebanon Daily News identified the 375-pound drone. Okay, I never said that. RQ-7 Shadow. Um, let's see. A military official called Wednesday afternoon's incident a hard landing, but the drone was apparently run over by a car. Guardsmen reportedly retrieved pieces of the 11-foot aircraft from the front of Lickdale Elementary School. What kind of name is that even for a school, Lickdale? Which is outside Harrisburg. The drone reportedly lost power at some point during the flight. 
There were no injuries and the drone was destroyed. School official told FoxNews.com that the students had already left the school at the time of the crash. Well, Don't use okay. it around my children. It's okay because there was no kids there, so it, it's okay. After school, we used to play on the school ground all the time. Right. Keep them away from our children. Keep these tools of war away from our children. Period. And what's the other point I wanted to make about that is uh, in Denver or Colorado, they had, they were uh, at one point they were writing out. Uh, licenses for uh, people to go hunt down drones. They right. since have repealed that. Right, because they were they were selling you another permit to shoot drones that they legalized to put in the air so that you could pay them for licenses to shoot down drones. Can I let that sink in to all these citizens that are buying these concepts? These are attorneys selling you these things after they perpetrate war upon you. Sick. Yeah, I don't like drones. I don't like... I mean, under the public law, without the attorneys stirring all the shit up worldwide, there's there nothing. wouldn't be all these wars in need for the damn things. And there's not any adversarial conflict. There's no controversy. It's There's created. Nothing. It's manufactured, just like uh, in um, Crimea, Ukraine, right now. Right. It's all attorneys. It's all attorneys. They're banking. Yeah. So let's see here. Now, March thirty-first. Missed one here. Um, Scottsdale policeman killed a truck driver as he backed into his own driveway by needlessly. Firing 11 shots at him. The late 72 year old man's son claimed in court. John Phillip and Preston Phillips III sued Scottsdale, must be Arizona, its police department, police chief Alan G. Rodbell, and officer Nathaniel Mullins for the wrongful death of their father, Preston Phillips Jr., in a Mar. Mar, Mar, Mar Maricopa County Court. Here we go in Maricopa again. Maricopa, Arizona. That's where they're holding uh, John Stewart in that jail by uh, run by uh, Sheriff uh, Arpaio, aka Hitler. And that guy's evil. And he's he's the one that's saying, "Oh, I got all this evidence on uh, Obama's birth certificate." Blah blah yeah. blah. You know, he knows it makes no difference in the world. Right, he's a federal agent. He's, he is. He's integrating with the federal state. He's married to the federal state. Him and corporate counsel are uh, shoulder and shoulder, neck and neck. Our pale is a sick, evil devil. And anyways, this is in his neck of the woods. Um, so, let's see... Uh, Let's see, Mullins spoke with, well, okay, according to the lawsuit, Officer Mullins and an unidentified officer responded to a call of a parking dispute between Phillips and a neighbor on March 27th, 2013. Mullins spoke with the neighbor and John Phillips, who lived with his father, the complaint states. So this is over a year ago, okay, and they're still litigating this this thing out. And, and, and this is another thing that happens in this world of commercial law that we're dealing with, these things litigate out for 20 or 30 years a lot of times. And it just goes on and on, and, and the attorneys are cashing in all the way. You know, like this one case here recently uh, where this, he was a billionaire, but uh, uh, over six years... Coke. Yeah, Coke. Uh, he won a million dollars in the lawsuit, but it cost him seven point eight million in attorney's fees. And the judge denied him his attorney fees, and that was funny because it costed him eight million dollars, seven point eight million dollars to win a million dollars. And even billionaires can see that, that the attorneys are raising them at that point in time. Now that's that's ridiculous. So back to the story, Mullen spoke with a neighbor and John Phillips, who lived with his father. When the other officer began writing a ticket to Phillips, his father drove up to the house and began backing into his own driveway. 
Mullins then drew his gun and began, and began yelling and fired 11 rounds into Phillips' truck, God. killing him, oh the brothers say. Uh, they claim that at no time did the father threaten Mullins or provide any justifying provocation. Another eyesore. He was parking in the wrong place. He, he was another eyesore. The dehumanization is allowing the slaughter of human beings based on the protection of... So he's... But this cop's writing the tickets out to Phillips. Here his dad comes home, just happened to come home at the wrong time, and was back in his truck up in the driveway. Yep. 72 years old, you can yell at him all you want, probably. He's probably listening to the radio, got the window up or something. Uh, that doesn't even matter. This guy just starts uh, yelling at him, and when he gets no response, uh, no immediate uh, uh, submission from this guy, just opens fire on him. Right. Who was the informant? you got to look for the CIA agent that informed, called in, and said that they were parking their vehicles in the wrong place, and that's what this is all over. They were uh, perpetrating an eyesore and were killed by corporate policy. And in that one, they're suing the cops, they're suing the city. They need to be suing corporate counsel and the ones who are murdering to facilitate the death derivatives of, quote, useless bread gobblers, which is what they consider human beings when they're in their 70s and they're on retirement or Social Security or whatever else. They consider them a drag on, on the um, corporation. They consider them too much overhead, and the cops are being used to facilitate their deaths. Mullins should have approached Phillips in a calm and quiet manner and avoided unnecessary physical aggregation rather than immediately escalating the situation by yelling and subjecting Mr. Phillips to grossly excessive force by inter alia shooting him to death, the complaint states. The Phillips seek punitive damages for negligence for excessive force that are presented by Matthew Brown of Brown and little in Tempe. Uh, they're being represented yeah, to, to death they're, again. Okay, under the public law, we don't hire attorneys to rent out our father's death. Okay, we hold this cop accountable under the public law for murder. And corporate counsel, the one that directed him to do Absolutely. Who's ever writing these policies, giving these directions, also need to be held accountable. So that's not just the cop here. Uh, yeah, this, this, this story sickens me to no end. Yeah, obviously, as you pointed out, yeah, there has to be an informant in there. Uh, again, it was a crime against the revenue. Commercial crimes under 27 CFR 72.11. And, again, another incident in Maricopa, Maricopa County. And Go after the everything case. in that county is just corrupt and sick. Right. Part of the UN. Look at where what Arizona is and who its corporate partners are, and you'll you'll uh, realize how close Arizona is with uh, Northern Holdings and Trust. When it comes down to it, though, the cops they're told to use discretion, and in the end, it was the cops finger on that trigger. Right. But so was he fearful? That's the thing that's the tool. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, there's that side of it too. Right. Because that's what corporate counsel does. It says, oh, they might be armed and dangerous. When you get over there, be really careful. Watch your back for the 71 year old because we're not sure if he's holding or carrying stuff. And, you know, they really, really um, fester these, these law enforcement agents and officers and provoke them into states of fear and states of uh, anger, states of rage, and whatever else. So I would like to know, you know, what his conversation was with corporate counsel at that time. We're coming up on three hours. Do you want to take a break? Uh, let's go to the top of the hour, and then um, basically uh, we covered everything here, I think, uh, that needs to be covered. So uh, let's just... Uh, wrap it up here I guess and um, 
let the folks digest all this because for any new listeners out there this is probably quite overwhelming right it uh, was for us in the beginning too you know that's that's something everybody needs to realize is that we've all been there you're not alone we've all been in your shoes we've walked it and um, we come from experience we're not uh, it's just been a profound journey but don't ever think that you're behind in the learning curve or anything else it takes a while for all of the seals to be broken that's what those seals are it's it's the different levels of indoctrination that you're now divesting yourself of and, and removing and as they're revealed so are you and evidenced by your own walk and that's what the revelation is all about and these people that are told these things given this information and they still want to go back and promote that constitution talk about the act of 1871 like that's the fix all cure all these people are agents right because for example uh Rat Toot 1009 there on YouTube. So it's constantly ramming that 1871 act on everybody's throat. You know, telling everybody, well, that's the cause of everything. And we need to get that repealed. That was one enablement act specific to Washington, D.C. You can't forget about the whole idea of these enablement acts starting in 1802. Not to mention the articles of incorporation that all the corporations come in under as United States Inc. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. I wanted to get that clip um <laughs> up there uh, about me going off on the other YouTubers. Oh, I can do that. I could do that another time. Doesn't no, I'm matter. I'm sorry. I was what I did was I queued up some songs to put on after we're off the air here in a minute before I have a chance to shut off the uh, or turn on the auto DJ. So that was my fault. I'm so sorry, everybody. Well, oh, that's all right. We, we'll, we'll be back again for the public law. Maybe we should start doing it every Friday at 10 or something. Um, as able. Of course, it'll be here on These Changing Times. And we are uh, completely uh, listener-supported. Uh Let's see, you'll catch uh, basically replays of our shows throughout the week on, from freedomslips.com. Turtle Island and Bone Rocco and Clint and I and Clint Richardson with Corporation Nation and Patty's show every week and every day. Um, there's Just check out the schedule. Uh, Sunday nights and always when we finally settle down and we usually get to listen to uh, uh, Ravana. And um, these, these are these are these changing times. And if you do want to donate and keep our station going, right now we're in a drive because Patty's been having a rough time. Um, please go to www.thesechangingtimes.radio.ning.com and click on the PayPal button. I think Patty's got a PayPal button there that is um, available for donations and uh, every little bit helps that's right that's not to pay us or anything uh, we're we're here because we need to get this information out and start shifting the consensus reality a little bit and educating you people about what is going on because this this is a reality is as, as we see in the news I never in my wildest dreams thought that uh, one would be able to facilitate these changes but as I see it uh, we're not going backwards so absolutely not absolutely not there are still things that need to be resolved Rocco's still being held as a political prisoner we still have these stories of uh, cops going ballistic here every day and our environment or habitat being polluted by these attorneys and we can't take much more so we've got to get people up to speed as to the public law so they know how to stand 
know where we're going from here because everybody's going to learn how to handle themselves and uh, quit relying on this thing called Congress that's killing you. So, yeah, that being said, yeah, you just uh, yep, I'm tired, I know. Um, so, I, am. I already queued up. <laughs> Before we hit any more wrong buttons, I guess we'll yep. just wish you all well. Be well, everybody.